Yo, yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Around the 412 first round of the 2024 NFL mock draft. Smitty, Tyler, of course, we're here, the Around the 412 guys, but two guys joining us. If you guys have followed us for years, these two have been joining us for mock draft. We lost some people along the way, but uh, Jake and Richie have been standing strong with us doing these mock drafts year in and year out. First off, introduce yourselves in case this is the first year that people are watching this. We'll start with Jake. Well, hello. Uh, I'm Jake Shavink. I uh, I cover the Packers in a lot of the NFL draft. Uh, I remember the first time I met these two down in Mobile. Uh, it was a, what a time. wonderful time. What a what a what a time. Pre pre pandemic, by the way, crazy mm -hmm. to think about. And uh, what a great time seeing Matt Rule uh, sit there at Veets. Oh my! <laughs> Bringing gosh. the crew to Veets at closing. Oh man! Yep. While uh, eating food from the the food truck right outside of Veets. Should have known that's when it was over. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, do so, do a lot in the draft space from from podcasts into to, to YouTube videos. But uh, circle this every year. This is this is one of my favorite uh, shows to do. So I'm I'm thrilled to be here. Can I'll I be wait? honest. Before I hand the uh, the keys over to Richie here, I will say there was a point in time where I was wondering if this was going to be able to happen. Uh, everybody that listens to or watches around the four and two knows that Tyler is going to be going to Europe. Uh, and this is literally the only <laughs> night that we can make this happen. So shout out to Jake and Richie for being so flexible and being able to join us. Jake does do a lot of great stuff. I'll have the link to his channel and everything uh, in the description of this. Um, but Richie, introduce yourself. Let the people know where to find you. You don't have to mention who your favorite team is or you know who you're covering or anything like that. But <laughs> <laughs> that's for the best. Uh, big time Arizona State Sun Devils guy. So locked on that's podcast fine. network. A little bit of everything. I help cover the. Arizona Cardinals with another good friend of ours, Donnie Druin. So yep, if you guys are fun. looking for someone to keep you in the loop on Arizona sports by some mm -hmm. weird chance, I'm definitely your guy. Is that it? No other team you want to mention? No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, we'll get to, we'll well, get to yeah. it. <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's, it's I don't see any in the background either. No, it's all on the other wall. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is my backdrop. This is his. This is his. Uh, okay. I thought this was specifically the around the four one two backdrop. <laughs> when you're on here, you know not to have the Raven stuff in the background. Um, I thought about wearing we... a jersey, but I opted to just stick with yeah. what I recorded with today. I appreciate. I appreciate what you went with. Uh, before we dive, go ahead. Nope, I was going to say there's time. I got jerseys right there. No, you're good. Just, just stick <laughs> like this. You look great. Uh, before we dive into this, do want to give a shout out to our guys over at Game Changers. Uh, head over to GameChanger.LA or Pick6.LA. Save $10 over there using code AT412 at checkout. Again, GameChangers.LA or Pick6.LA. Best vintage tees in the game. I think I have 25, maybe 26 on the way. Uh, Game Changer shirts, so... Head over, upgrade your closet. Um, boys, I don't think we can wait any longer. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to dive into it. We each got a specific amount of teams here that we will be picking for. Tyler, you will be kicking this thing off with uh, a, a very hard decision. No one knows what the Bears are going to do at this point in time as we sit here right now, less than a week out uh, at pick number one. I don't think it's been talked about much. I don't think so either. And if you remember when I had this in 2020 as well, I did throw a screw a screw wrench in there, and I I did pick Chase Young first overall. We're gonna be pretty chalk yeah, with this. Oh one. wow, yeah, I forgot I'm about that one. Yeah, you remember when I didn't pick Joe Burrow? I was just trying to <laughs> throw a screwball in there. Um, but I'm debating on whether I need to wait the ten minutes that the Chicago Bears are gonna actually take <laughs> in order to make this pick, even though the pick is already gonna be submitted right before this draft is even underway. Um, it's obvious. Everybody knows it's gonna be Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is number one overall. The Steelers, who are our team, are the benefactor of part of that as well, getting Justin Fields in a trade. If that is not more obvious that they're taking a quarterback and not just a quarterback, but this quarterback in particular, I don't know what is. Um, I feel like this is probably as close to a, a chalk pick as we've gotten in, like, I, I think back to, like, Steelers-related, whenever Najee Harris was coming out. Everybody knew that that Najee was going to be a Steeler before it happened, and for good reason. That Caleb Williams is going to be number one overall. He's the number one quarterback in this draft. A very versatile player, a very dynamic player, and I do think that in in some parts of his game, like yeah, obviously this this off season, I feel like he's gotten a 
a bad shtick from some people, the, the confidence and cockiness of him. But honestly, for good reason. And I'm, my question about Caleb Williams isn't his individual talent. It is whether or not Chicago Bears are going to ruin him because they seem to do that with every single quarterback they take. But I think that he is going to be set up better as of right now than any other Chicago quarterback probably ever has before, but definitely better than what Justin Fields was going into whenever he was drafted just a few years ago. So I think he's better to succeed. I think he's better set up than some of the teams behind him to succeed as well. Caleb Williams, hopefully he does well in Chicago. Yeah, let's keep in mind that this is Carolina's pick here. So they wouldn't actually have the number one without that trade uh, Mm -hmm. with Carolina moving up last year to get Bryce Young and then still finishing with the worst record in football. Um, Because I agree with you. I think the infrastructure for him there is much better than, you know, situations that their past quarterbacks as recently as Justin Fields have been put into. I I don't obviously love the Keenan Allen contract. There's a reason that they got him for just a fourth round pick at a discount. But when you get him, DJ Moore and potentially another weapon that, you know, you will have your choice of what you want to do with nine down the line there to add to that, along with the resources that they continue to pour into the defense. I think the offensive line is coming along. I think Caleb's in a pretty good spot here to succeed early in his career. Yeah, agreed. 100%. Nice and sharp. 100%. Okay, there we go. Caleb Williams, number one, brings us to number two, the commanders on the clock. And for this pick, we turn to Jake Shavink. Yeah, this is this is a tough call. I'm I excited think, for this. I, I assume we're trying to be predictive, right? I think that's the goal here. Or is, yes, is I it would really say so. open-ended? Okay. I, I well, mean, okay, so the reason that I say that is similarly to Jake, one of my favorite videos that happens every year in the uh, yeah, in the man. draft community in general is when Jake goes back and reacts to his way-too-early draft from a year prior. I would like to be able to do something similar with this video 100%. for next year. So being as predictive as possible, I would like to see how close we can get it. Because I'll be honest, like going back and looking at past ones that we've done, if we haven't necessarily hit it on the head, we've at least had a conversation about the player that ended up going in that spot or like a team in a player being a fit. Yeah, I think it's a coin flip, honestly. I, I'm not sure which way Washington is leaning. I think obviously Jane Daniels has been the favorite at number two for for quite some time it's funny Mm -hmm. that he's been the favorite though for the majority of what we call quote-unquote lying season which kind of starts around (laughs) february it rolls to the combine free agency we hear a lot of nonsense um and it's you know about that time where we we start to hear a little bit more that's that's truthful leading up to the draft if it were me it's drake may a hundred percent not even thinking twice about it I know people like to talk about like, oh, the fit is the difference. Like really the difference is like if Daniels can, you know, house an 80 yard run at any time in a game. <laughs> like that's that's right. like if you're looking for something that like is like, oh, this is this is different about about player X versus player Y. Like that's that's why Daniels would be considered because they're both they've both played in the air raid that Kingsbury is going to run. So like May did that in 2022. And then obviously Daniels has done it. I I feel like. I feel like Dan Quinn and, and, and all of those guys in there are, are going to want a little bit more electricity at the quarterback yeah. position. So I'm going to go with what has been consensus chalk as well in mocks and, and take Jaden Daniels here, who I think besides the, you know, the electric playmaking skills as a runner, I, I do think you can see him spray it around the yard pretty well with, with accuracy. I think the one question mm-hmm. with Daniels besides, you know, one of the best comps ever of draft season, calling him Johnny Knoxville when he runs around. That is, <laughs> I love that incredible. Dude. It's it's one of the best comps of all time. It's just like Ben, ben Solak did some charting and, and on on all these QBs and like looking at how much he doesn't stand and deliver when pressure's there, and he's always he's always leaving right. He, he's always trying to find an avenue outside the pocket. He's not he's never really scrambling to pass. He is scrambling to run, and so. If you can't get that out of him, that's going to be a problem. And, you know, Cliff Kingsbury, not the greatest track record, you know, kind of had Mahomes and people are still down on Mahomes as a prospect. Like, do I like this? Not really. Do I think this is probably going to happen? Yeah. I think people kind of overwrite the arm a little bit too. I mean, people are talking about it like a better arm than Lamar. Somebody threw out there, an anonymous person in the NFL. And you watch him. (laughs) 
And there was a play where a dude, or I almost said a dude's name, Malik Neighbors had to come back. And it was like 50 yards, which like 50 yards, obviously nothing to sneeze at. But like we're talking about the way that you, people have talked about his arm. You would think he's some guy like he has a Josh Allen arm. Yeah. And that's just not the case. I just think it's a bit overrated, the arm talent that he has. I think he's a good player. I, I have no problem with him going within the top 10, top five even. But I wouldn't take him before Drake May. No. I would not either. Okay. But uh, You but made. Listen, the commanders, ahead. they operate on a on a. On a different plane than we do right now. I they think. sure yeah. do. So uh you made my decision easy. Honestly, if you had taken May and I was left with Daniels, I would be entertaining a trade back here yeah. as the Patriots. Uh or maybe even going Marv. But uh with Drake May still being on the board, don't need to give this much thought. That's who I'm going to take at three. Don't love the situation that he's going into on the uh opposite end of the spectrum there from the situation that Caleb is going into I hate whoever New England drafts as a quarterback at three assuming that they do it like I think that's an awful situation for somebody to get dropped into um yeah. so that's just kind of where I'm at with it I think it's going to happen um you know Elliot Wolf was talking about they feel comfortable with both guys you know like honestly more than you typically get out of personnel for him to say that that basically whichever one doesn't get taken at two, they feel comfortable enough at three to take one. And also saying that, you know, chances are they're going to draft a quarterback. So like he's given us more than enough to be able to read the tea leaves here and say that they are going to take a quarterback in this spot. So for me, Drake Mays the pick. Uh, I think that's a smart pick for them. I just don't like it for him. Smitty, what do you think about New England just saying like, yeah, because Elliot Wolf, you know where he's from. What do you think yeah. about New England being like, hey, this roster is horrible. We're not throwing you to the Wolves this year. Brissett's going to play. I, You're not playing this year. Yeah. We'll get two years full of offensive line and receiver and everything that's going to be in place for you to start in 2025. How do we feel about that? And, on, and honestly, that's kind of been some of the conversation too, where it's like, do they maybe do exactly what you're thinking, but trade back into the first, or even if it's a trade down from this spot and it's Penix at some point that they, that they look at. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Um, I, that's that's honestly probably what I would do. As a fan, that's kind of hard to sell. Like, we're just kind of punning on this year. Yeah. But when you have the opportunity to draft a franchise quarterback, but I, like as opposed to some of the situations where we talk about, and it's like, oh, when are they going to be up drafting this high again? No, I think New England is going to be up drafting this high again. <laughs> like, I think they're going to have opportunities <laughs> to get franchise quarterbacks in the coming years. So I don't think this is like a one-and-done shot here for them that they yeah. got a hit on a quarter, franchise quarterback. I think that's where I'm going to see a lot of teams go back to sitting behind a, a starter for at least a year or two. I, I think that recent history of quarterbacks, mm. re, especially since 2021, first round quarterbacks have been a big disappointment, I feel like. So I think that teams that's an are interesting smart thought. up. When, like, when you look at like what Patrick Mahomes did, when you look at, I mean, the most recent example, Jordan Love, look at what he was able to do after sitting yeah, that's for several seasons. I, I, I think that Teams and is not only when you look at what those quarterbacks did. Look at that 2021 draft in general. Look at 2022. Yeah. Kenny Pickett, um, Bryce Young. Granted, the situation wasn't great for Bryce Young going into Carolina, but still, I think that we're probably going to see. And this is my opinion, but I think we're going to see some more teams draft guys early, but still sit them, and they're just going to have to get over what the fans think. That's interesting. I mean, that could be like football in general go, comes in waves, right? Like we see these trends, they kind of go away and then they come back um, like re, like the guard market. This free agency just like exploded for whatever reason, a position that's just been devalued. All of a sudden it blows back up. So like, is this going to be a trend now going forward or paying the interior offensive lineman again? I don't know. And then like a running back is going to all of a sudden that no, probably not. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's like, interesting like the way that. <laughs> ebbs and flows go in this league so i mean you might be onto something i'll be curious to see how it plays out tire came off um, when you were like uh running back wait a minute wait a minute hold nah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I, i've gone too far <laughs> yeah let me not get ahead of myself um richie you are on the clock for the arizona cardinals not your favorite team but arizona ties obviously connected what are we thinking i'm thinking there's 10 minutes on the clock you probably take close to the whole 10 minutes you have a team like the vikings that 
you you've said reading the tea leaves. It it's very very obvious they want to move up. It was obvious the moment they got the second first round pick from the Texans. Texans. It was obvious when Kirk Cousins left. Everybody knows that they want to move up for a quarterback. If you're the Cardinals, what you're hoping is somehow Drake May is available or something happens to where there's more than one quarterback here. But nonetheless, it feels like the Vikings have done a lot of homework on all these quarterbacks. They shouldn't feel too bad about J.J. McCarthy if they do decide to come up and take him. To me, they're either moving for the fourth pick or they're moving for the fifth pick. I know for sure they're moving up. We we all know that for sure. You don't need a crystal ball to sit here and tell you, oh, I wonder if they're moving up. They are. Hey, I, I'm in charge of the Vikings. I really like Michael Penix. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that sure is how That's it's like going to happen. That's like something you would say at the Combine right there. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Michael Penix. I'm staying pat with these two nice first-round picks here. Yeah, I'm sure you do, Grandma. Come on, let's go to bed. <laughs> But um, you're you're gonna listen for calls for this pick. If you don't get what you want, you're gonna stick and pick. It's uh, to me, it's really the Vikings too. The only other team you listen to is maybe the Giants because you're only moving down two selections. But the yeah. Vikings should be calling about the fourth pick or the fifth pick. If the Cardinals mm-hmm. stay and pick, it's Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think there's any other option. If they do get the the uh, the offer that they want, you probably move down. So I guess my question is six definitely would make sense if they can do that. That's with the small slide that that is. And you know, there's only one team really in between because you know what they're coming up for a quarterback. So you'd really only be banking on whatever the Chargers decide to do there. Um, going to 11 though, with the Vikings, is that a slide that Arizona would be okay with? Would the assumption be they're going to do the same thing, trade down, then come back up like they did for Paris, which like that can be your plan. But unless that's agreed to beforehand, you're not just going to make that deal and then just assume that you can get back up. It's it's really funny to think about like that that draft day trade where they get all those first round picks and then they get them right back because they take Monte Mack number one and everything. Like mm-hmm. that's the dream for the Cardinals is they move down out of four and then they move right back up to five and they still get Marvin Harrison Jr. and everything that they want. Moving down to eleven. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world, especially if you're looking at the offensive side of the football. There's a lot of offense. There's lots of receivers. There's lots of offensive linemen. Uh, normally, you would say Brock Bowers, but they have Trey McBride, so you don't need a tight end. But you would be okay moving down to 11. What I would be curious about, if if you move down to 11 with the Vikings and the Chargers end up moving the fifth pick, which that also feels like something that's very likely to happen, you mm-hmm. could call the Giants about moving back up for Marvin Harrison Jr. It's it's just a weird situation, but I don't think they would be too upset about moving down to 11. But like you said, Austin Ford did it last year in his first year. Uh, we can't make the assumption that's going to be every year, but he clearly, when he sees a player he wants, he's going to make sure that he gets him. So I want to bring this up just in case, because somebody said, you know, we're going to do this to run this back see if this this yeah yeah comes true how do we feel about like you know the move down to 11 right we get moved down to 11 we hop back up with atlanta who we feel like might be a team that just wants to move out right they're probably going to have a lot of defensive players on the top of their board they move mm-hmm. out a few picks they're still going to get a defensive player you get rome ahead of chicago or the jets Ooh. yeah it's i think not that makes marvin. a lot of sense too it's not marvin but i mean it's doomsday. So here's the only yeah. problem with all that with all of this. While you guys were talking, I've secretly been on the phone with Harbaugh. So we would rather oh. trade to five than to four. Exactly. And, and I think I think there's a chance that the Jets could trade with the Titans to take Roma Dunze. So Yeah. Mm. I think there's gonna end up being a lot of movement in the top ten, but that works for me. If I'm not gonna get the value I want, I'll just take Marvin Harrison Jr. I Twist my arm, I'll take the generational talent wide receiver. Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. Listen, if I would have done this, if I would have done one overall like I did in 2020 where I took Chase Young over Joe Burrow, I would have taken Marvin Harrison Jr. number one overall because he is my top prospect. 
get a little Marvin yeah. Harrison Penix duo uh, at one and nine. You know why? That the plan? <laughs> because that 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 uh, freaking uh, Caleb Williams couldn't beat the damn Utes. He could not beat Utah. He's zero and three against Utah, <laughs> so he's a bust. Yep. Like, um, that just landed. That. It took me a second to put that together. Have, <laughs> have you guys, not to get off too off track, have you guys listened to the Ringer NFL draft show at all? I they, not like I don't listen to every episode. So they do the take like, purge. That's a phenomenal take for that. I, like if you've listened okay. to the take purge episode, they get out like just insane yeah. takes about the draft class. Yeah, Tyler, that would be a perfect one for that. Like Caleb Williams <laughs> is bad. He couldn't beat Utah. Like he what are we even yeah. doing? He was zero and three right? against Utah. He couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Not once. Once is Not fine. Twice. Like it's a fluke. It could happen. He, right. Not no. even twice. <laughs> three times. Yeah. That's He's zero three. Jaron Hall's one and zero. Makes you think. <laughs> <laughs> the Bears should have just traded for Jaron Hall. Yep. <laughs> That's really yep. what, what should have happened. Um, yeah. Tyler, you have control of the charges in this, so it's ring, you that I'm going to have to try to ring, swing ring. the deal with. Yeah, ring, I, ring. I'm using. I'm on my headset. Oh, okay. My <laughs> um. Yeah, so I'm looking here. You guys have five. We have 11. We would love to come up for J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback that you had in college and you know everything about. We feel very comfortable with him. I think he can do everything that we want him to do in Kevin O'Connell's system. Actually, this is Kevin O'Connell right now on the phone, so in my system. Um, so <laughs> so what would it take uh, to get from 11 to 5? How do you feel about 11 and 23? Just, just those two? Yeah, I'm generous. Realistically, what do we think, though? Like, your guys' input as well, Rishi and Jake. They got to send a future one, too. Like, I, I know it's only one pick difference because wow. that's what the Cardinals would be asking. Well, you got you also got to realize there's a quarterback tax. You're coming up for a franchise quarterback. And there's not two left of those top that's, four. Yeah, this that's right. the like, element. Like you said, if Drake May would have fallen to, to four, yeah. Maybe you lose a little bit yeah. of like charges have all the leverage here right now. Complete yeah. leverage. It's it's not close. Yeah. And again, Vikings are going to move up. There's like no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So what if, if they're going to make this work now at five, because if they can't get to five, McCarthy's going six. So Man, this how, is about, it. how about AB Minnesota. and that wild CT ESPN Justin <laughs> oh Herbert God, to the Vikings dude. thing? <laughs> <laughs> With like his two hundred million dead cap that he'd have exactly. if they traded him. Oh man! <laughs> He's like, you thought the Russ dead cap was bad? Yeah. Just you wait. Here we go. Eleven twenty three. The West no, doesn't know what they're doing. So does this? Does this work? I don't have the trade. I, I'm not familiar with like the trade value chart, but like I've never looked at Rich Hill, and I'm looking at it now, and like this says okay. Rich Hill chart says like. You know the value of eleven and twenty three, and another first is like way over number five. But it's the QB thing, right? It's the scarcity right. yeah. of the quarterback position. You I can would still mm -hmm. toss him a bone and like give him like one pen on the way back or something. But like this or year, yeah, something like that. Well, it's not, okay. Yeah, it's really but not like, going to matter for no. specifically us, but just no. yeah, okay. But like yeah, something like that. I think anything that's not three first would blow me away. Wait. They can reject that I have control of all of them. How do you reject trade? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, I wonder which side they rejected so, it So from. do it backwards. Oh, yeah. Wait, what do you mean? So oh, did you... instead of... Yeah. So if that doesn't work, then have the Look, you did Chargers it as, do it. Or just trying to trade back. There we go. There there we go. go. Yeah, that's so you gave them one, 110? Yeah. Okay. No, 140. 140 this year. 140. Okay. All right, so I have it with me. That's why I now have 11, 23, and next year's first. Yes, Cook. So I'm coming up here. Obviously, the conversation doesn't need to be had. JJ McCarthy. Yeah. I personally would not do this. Um, <laughs> I think there's some interesting things about yeah. JJ McCarthy. Uh, I do think if there is an NFL team that could get the most out of him early, it is right here in Minnesota. So, like, landing spot wise, good for him. Uh, but for them to make this deal the equivalent of three firsts, I know if you're talking about a future first, like next year, it's equates to a second this year. So however you want to kind of value that. But either way, for me, that's a lot to give up for J.J. McCarthy. I personally wouldn't do it. I think Minnesota's going to. Minnesota, I, I, will, I will say a good spot about Minnesota is I think yeah. it is the perfect landing spot for whatever quarterback is going to come out. It is the best landing spot for a team that needs a quarterback. 
Yeah, I agree. And I, and I think if you look at uh, one thing that J.J. McCarthy, to me at least, did pop on tape quite a bit is the play action passing. I mean, that's in Kevin O'Connell's wheelhouse. So I do think if it's going to work out early, this is probably the best spot for him. Yeah. Yeah. Justin Jefferson running digs, Hawkinson over the middle once he gets back healthy. Justin Jefferson's getting traded to Pittsburgh. But, like, oh, yeah, whoever else oh, is going to be you. there, Jordan Addison. C-T-E-S-P-M, I got it again. <laughs> got you. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, um, but yeah, J.J. Yeah, McCarthy is this year's Zach Wilson, by the way. I, I is have that a good thing? That. I have heard. No, it's not a good <laughs> thing. No, no, that's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> Listen, I'm a BYU fan. I know it better than anybody else. It's not a good thing. Oh, man. We brought, we brought um, up Zach Wilson. He did get traded yeah. today. That's, he did that's, get traded. He did yeah. get traded today. He did. Denver. QB1. Imagine being I mean, Denver right now. <laughs> The battle oh, between her and Jarrett Stidham. Jared I can't Stidham contain myself. And Thank Ben DiNucci. Oh, man. Lock oh, yeah. up your mom, Denver. Winning. That is going winning. to be a hell of a training camp right there, that battle. Everybody, everybody, we need to back DiNucci right now. It will be incredible if he gets it done. <laughs> I mean, um, they traded for a quarterback, and somehow they're worse than the QB room for the Steelers <laughs> last year. Yeah, that's that's insane. That's not good. rare air. Um, all right. Uh, Jake, you are on the clock with the New York Giants here at six. What a board for them with the way oh, things played out here. You just you love to see this. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so me personally, I I would at least entertain the idea of taking alt here just because your offensive line is horrible. By the way, like yep. other than Andrew Thomas, it was dreadful last year. Like mm-hmm. Evan Neal through through two seasons. Brother, yeah. uh, do you try him at guard at this point, or I think no? You have I mean, to. and that's and okay. I think that's the reasoning for like saying, you know, why not take alt here? You have a deep receiver class. You can build an aggregate of receivers like that that could match a lot of the production that you might be able to get out of one of these top three guys. I don't think they're doing that. Uh, Malik neighbors go burr, and and like they're gonna take him here at six. Like that type of explosiveness, <laughs> like it, it's just. It's so controlled too. Like I know Smitty and I were talking about this, you know, yesterday a little bit. Like just the way he plays, how controlled he is, and just in three steps, he's at he's at sixty miles an hour. And we're 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 just gone. And I think he plays with more nuanced transitioning to post catch uh, than he's given credit for. I think he like can, can make some late adjustments to the football, work back to it, right? You know, find some space for himself. And like I think he's just more technically refined than he gets credit for, just because everybody watches him run. And they're like, oh my gosh, he can just score from anywhere. Mm-hmm. I'd be really thrilled about this for the Giants. I, I again, Rome would be awesome here too, no doubt. Um, sure, but I just love the idea of neighbors on this team, and you know, hopefully find your QB at some point, and you know, we'll get ourselves <laughs> so that's, going that's in the right direction. <laughs> that's definitely the pick. I don't want you to be Richie Bradshaw on this and like yeah. end up saying. But on yeah. the, with that said, I'm taking Olu Fashion. No, 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 no. Hey, I didn't do that. It's true. He didn't. He didn't do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for it still. Um, First time. Someone right, said so the word dog. Tennessee oh. Titans are on the clock. That is. Oh, I'm the Titans. Okay. Um, I don't know that I want to drag this out. I'm going to take Joe Alt. Darn it. Seventh overall for the Tennessee you didn't Titans. Pick up my phone. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let you me didn't see. Pick up my phone. Hello. What's going on? This is uh, this is Joe Douglas of the Jets. Uh, prepared to send you a, a fruitful little offer here for pick seven if you're interested. Hmm. Okay. Let me uh, let me talk it over with our guys real quick. Guys, it's Joe Douglas. Yeah. Who the hell's that? No, I, di- no, I didn't ask about Aaron. You want me to ask about Aaron? <laughs> no. Okay. So what, what do we? Will Levis or Aaron Rodgers right now? <laughs> looking at our board, like if we were to slide back, they pick at ten. So there'd be them and two more teams between us. We know what they're coming up for. Right. Okay. Can we do that? What do you mean you called Joe already? Hang up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Sounds good. Thanks. I'll see what I can do. Hang Uh, on. We're willing to listen. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. I'm. How's Aaron doing, by the way? Oh, he's looking good. He he was healthy in December. What do you mean? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. He kind of came back. <laughs> yeah, but we just knew we, the season was kind of over. If, if we were in it, he he would have played, obviously. Um, 
would love to give you our, 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 you know, a second, but like, you know, we, we can't do that. <laughs> we don't have it. <laughs> That's what I was, when That's I saw uh, that zip code pop up, I was a little bit confused. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it was actually the giant. The giants were trying as well. I heard, um, they're madmen. They want Rome and Malik. They're insane. Um, two thirds this year, next year. Hmm. Let me see. They're offering two thirds. Yeah, this year, next year, third. They don't have a second. Keep that in mind. <laughs> no, I didn't I look love, at the trade value. Chart. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look at the chart. What's? I don't care about the trade value. What's our trade value chart? <laughs> I don't care about anybody else's. Are we willing to slide back? Do we feel like we can still get our guy? Can I? Can I? They're already making Joe Alt jerseys. I said, hang up. <laughs> I said, hang up. I love this so much. All right. Well, I mean, that's something that I would be willing to, especially looking at the number of picks that we have. We're, we're not close, guys. Like, I know that we spent money <laughs> in free oh, agency man. in Tough this division. Team. There's some uncomfortable conversations going on in Tennessee's draft room. Okay. And I love it so I'm, much. I they feel didn't good mute about the that. mic. Do they know that? They didn't mute it. I feel good about that. No, I'm we'll muted. Say, what are you talking about? I will say. <laughs> you can't hear me. I will say, guys, <laughs> because the, we can't, he can't hear us. The, he's in Tennessee's room right now. Would Chicago like actually just take all in front of them? Right. Even I though, like, I feel that a spite. Just because I feel like, good about I feel good about one of those two. I feel good about Chicago, one of those. Two. Chicago is still Chicago. Okay, they're gonna I'll take a bad pick. I'll let him know. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Yep. Talk to yeah. No. No. Don't don't tell him yet. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Love you too. There you go. All right, uh, I'm back. What's going on? They said we're we can do that. We'll send do that. All right. So we'll send pick seven for ten and in. two threes. All right, we're in. All in. <clears throat> Sounds good. Called in. All right. Didn't know I was watching draft day. <laughs> hey, hey, the, you, you, no, no. Hold on a minute. Call it in is definitely a thing. They actually got that part right. Somehow. Wait, what is the? Is it one eleven then? No, it'd be, it'd be 72. Okay, I was going to say, wait a minute, I might, we might have to depleting. rethink. I was just saying, we might have to are, rethink this. No, no, Jets are depleting themselves right now. That's fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, you're the worst with <laughs> this. This is, this is. I did, I thought if it was going Tennessee to Jets, it would be easier to, for them to accept. Yeah, I don't. Unless I did it backwards the first time. Smitty the Woat. I can't do it either way. Oh well, I guess but you're we'll not in. To... You made the you made the jerseys already. <laughs> we'll have to just understand that the, that was what the deal was. But I'm gonna have to like. I guess you just should have yeah, looked at the, the trade 20, chart. Then. Se- tr- give the twenty twenty five seconds. See if it works. Just like that. Yeah, maybe. What the heck? They're stingy, man. Titans just want Joe Alt. You know. Do it's next year's possible. third, and they'll do it. I'm just gonna do the first because we know they'll accept that. Yeah, probably. And we can just move on. Well, now you've just ruined the integrity right. of this whole mock. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you forget about the Malik Willis move up with the Jets and trying to like parse through those things back and forth? Oh my goodness, that was tough. Um, well, yeah, this is this is really easy. Um, we told them we were taking Rome and we bamboozled them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Cooper nah, DeGene. We'll, yeah, right, right. No, uh, yeah. So this will be for Roma Dunze, right? I think. Mike Williams, fine, sure. Uh, how are we feeling about on that, that <laughs> slit film turf out there after an ACL tear? Not yeah, great, I'd I, imagine, right? So He was going to meet with Pittsburgh if he didn't sign there uh, when he met th- with them. I mean, he's better than what they got in the room now after George, right? But, like, I wasn't. People were, like, super excited about him meeting with them, and I was like, I, fine. Like, I don't – he doesn't change anything for me. No, and it, it shouldn't change anything for the Jets either. You get an Adunze Garrett Wilson pairing for Aaron Rodgers. Man, yeah. as long as as long as you know they're they're off to injured tackles stay healthy, they're fine. We're fine. They're like <laughs> got no problem out here. We're we're good. But like seriously, a Dunze on the back shoulder time and time again. Yep. Like, come on. Like that plus yep. how good he is at getting open, using his physicality to get open. Right, he's still got plenty of twitch and, and plenty of efficiency through the route break. Like he is pretty complete in all phases. I know he's not the best after catch player, but like 
good enough vision, good enough toughness. Like, yeah, it, it, he is exceptional and also unlucky at the same time. And, and, you know, I think he's going to be awesome with Aaron for a year because of the back shoulder stuff that you mentioned. And then it's going to be, man, who's playing quarterback after Aaron? Like, okay, maybe Aaron does come back for another year because of everything that he said. But like, yeah, regardless, post Rogers era Jets. What does that look like? What does it look like? We know it's not Um, Zach Wilson. Listen, you know, we're we don't even know if we're going to be here on Sunday, right? Pulling from Kyle Shanahan <laughs> back with the Trey Lance, Mac Jones thing, we're we're in yeah. here for now. We're, we're not, we can't be worried about that, right? This is not a move where where we as management are worried about what's happening at twenty five. We're here to try to win a Super Bowl. Are we doing the best job? That's that's up to you to decide. But you know, that's, 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 <laughs> if the quarterback gets hurt, they just admit that the season's over, right? That's and what happened so, last year? Yeah, it's we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Um. All right. This is an interesting spot. I'm excited to see what happens here because now the Falcons are on the clock. Ton of activity around them so far. Eighth overall, the Atlanta Falcons. Richie, you are on the clock. I will say before Richie says it, if if you denied that trade, I was Mm going to call Atlanta as Buffalo to come get Rome. And offer a lot. And and I would call and say, you remember that Julio Jones trade, your organization, you love that. We're going to do the I same. Literally, thing. was going to say that it's just the opposite. Right? Yeah, just the opposite. We're coming up now, so like, I think something interesting as well. Like Buffalo could get insane with their aggressiveness. I almost wonder if, um, you know, there would be a team now trying to get up to eight with Alt still on the board. I'm just trying to figure out who it would be. Like, would the Chargers try to come back up for Alt now? Um, the Saints at 14 with the situation Could that be. they have. Could be. Yeah, you're not trading with the Saints, though. Yeah, I don't think... You're not trading in division. I know the uh, NFC North is like to yeah. do it, but like Falcons-Saints just seems like if there's a rivalry where I go, they're never trading. That's the one. Mm, yeah, I, honestly, I forgot who actually had the pick for a second there. I was just like, Joe Alt's still on the board, Saints tackle. No, yeah, that, um, it makes sense. Yeah. So, I don't know. Just wanted to throw that out there for those teams. I don't have control of either of them, I don't think. so. No, I, I have the Saints. Yeah. We're comfy. Okay. We're what do you reliever. think, then? Yeah, the same thing as the Cardinals. You let the whole 10 minutes go by. Uh, to me, you could fancy, like, Roma Dunze if he's there. Just the, the image yeah, of not, having... Though. Right. But <laughs> if he were, he you, he's someone that you think about. The The idea of having him, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson, all really exciting. He's probably the only offensive player you're considering here. I think that their offensive line is fine. I don't think that drafting Joe Alt would be the best thing they can do when you look at how bad that defense is. And even though it's not the popular opinion. I do think that there is one defensive player that is absolutely worth the top 10 pick. And that's Dallas Turner. I think that Turner is slam dunk pro bowl potential from day one. Probably takes a little bit of time, but big fan of him. I also love Latu Latu, but being realistic. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know that he's top 10 even though I think he's probably the best defender in the draft. But I do believe that Dallas Turner's upside is just ridiculous. So I sit here. I see if anyone's going to call me. If not, I'm taking Dallas Turner. So going once, going twice, sold. Dallas Turner. Okay. But with that being said. They had all the calls blocked from New Orleans, so. You couldn't even get through. <laughs> Not even listening to that. So with that being what said, do we, what are we doing, goes. Terry? <laughs> um, no, I like the pick. I like Dallas Turner a lot, actually. I do have Leatu Latu a little bit higher in my edge rankings, but like if you're fact, if I had to factor in medical concerns, obviously, like sure. you know, Leatu Latu has obviously some of those at one point medically retired from the game, but. Just as a player, man, he's so sick. Yeah, I think that was Turner. Put in if you also like maybe put in like ascension potential, right? For a yeah. Dallas Turner, like where do you see Dallas Turner mm-hmm. in two years? 
I feel like you see Latu right. in two years of being kind of who he is at this point, right? I don't think he's going to un- suddenly unlock. Uh, and I think Jared, honestly, pretty right? much the same conversation with Jared Verse. Like he's yeah. probably a safer. Pick. Yes. Yep. Yeah. They're safe. High floor. Mm-hmm. What Jake's alluding to Turner's ceilings through the roof. Yep. Yeah. I like him a lot. Might even be the roof, you know, <laughs> roof. who could say, uh, Tyler, you are back on the clock. Caleb Williams first overall. What do you want to pair that with? So I think that my decision got easier as the picks were just unfolding in front of the Bears. They didn't move up for Roma Dunze, which if he would have fell, that would have been the easy pick. Get a shiny new toy for Caleb Williams. Um, And the other other position I was actually thinking about for the Bears is Dallas Turner to go along the opposite side of Montez Sweat and sure up that defensive front. But we're actually going to go with Joe Alt. Uh, <laughs> Love it. We are going Burn to protect. Jerseys. That's a tough we, scene. We are going to protect oh, our God. new shiny toy that we took number one overall. You drafted Darnell Wright last year out of Tennessee. Oh, and I think that Joe Alt, clearly the number one tackle this year, I feel like that's pretty much chalk with everybody. A mountain of man. I'm like fashion just... here. But... <laughs> <laughs> and he's just exceptional. Um, I, I think that you need to be able to protect that quarterback. You saw what Justin Fields struggled with for three seasons in Chicago, the offensive line that was playing in front of him. It helped out that, that Justin Fields could move around a little bit, but still taking way too many sacks, having you get pressured too often. I think that you need to protect Caleb Williams, and I think the Bears are going to be smarter about it this time around and take Joe Alt. I mean, Brock Bowers is still there. <laughs> Jared Ver- Jared Verse is still there. Col- Cole Komet <laughs> got that new contract, man. <laughs> All right, Joe Alt's the pick for Chicago at nine. Insane value. I can't believe he fell to nine, but he should have fell to man. Ten. Carthen didn't, didn't work out in Tennessee's there. favor for that yeah. one. Yeah. Valuable <laughs> lesson learned of like make sure I gotta you make know what's going on with the teams. <laughs> Listen, if it didn't, if it worked out, I th- I think that I would have looked at Roma Dunze and see? Dallas Turner if they were both still on the board. Did you see what but the Bears just did? It's, it's just. <laughs> It's it's just that the the picks in front of me were happening and I had to right. just play the board. I'm sorry about it. Smitty just got fired, dude. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I mean, we got the two thirds. <laughs> Smitty has to buy Fashion all of the Joe Alt jerseys now. That's a Fashion is great. That's Fashion is going to be great. Oh man. Fashion is so funny. The tw- yeah, 2022 was probably better than 2023. He's going to be great. We're going to get him in here. Yeah, give him a call. Let him know. Oh, I know. Gosh. Yeah, just tell Joe. Yeah, <laughs> tell tell Joe that obviously like it didn't pan out the way we thought it might. Uh, Chicago had the board fall to them that way. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> right. Uh. I'm excited about this. I think that this is honestly the way it was supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, give. Give Olu a call. Let him know. Welcome to Tennessee. He's who we were going to take regardless. <laughs> Olu's right. walking in the offices and he sees an alt jersey in the garbage. Just like, wait, what, am, what happened here? <laughs> All right. Um, for the There's Titans at 10. Paper, Olu, no matter what. I'm on the, the yeah, clock here like, with the Titans you, at 10. You see a little sticky this... note, Joe Alt, no matter what, in the trash. <laughs> the board <laughs> fell uh, exactly how we wanted here. So we're going to take uh, the number one tackle on our board, Olu Fashionu out of Penn State. I got to scroll down a little bit for him. The PR team got way out in front of <laughs> hey, us. They I did mean, a that's, tremendous job, I got to say. That's good value. Good value. You know, you picked up two-thirds. I think being able to, to move back and take, to, a, take, the, take the number one tackle on your board, that's, that's just great right. value. Uh, Olu has always been the pick. He was the pick at seven. <laughs> we do we that's gonna be my favorite just, part of watching this back is the uh, conversation <laughs> with myself yeah your conversations with the trade and then posts you know <laughs> getting all taken in front of you is is top tier for this these mock drafts that we've but hey we got the two-thirds <laughs> <laughs> that killed me man <laughs> Incredible. Um, Black Monday is going to suck for Zach. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just going to have a Joe Alt picture as he walks out. <laughs> like, you did this. Uh, and I'm back on the clock with the Chargers. Back on the clock. Yeah, sandwiching and the Titans there. <clears throat> this is 
probably the most if this actually happens where the Vikings and the Chargers make the trade and the Chargers get 11. I I feel like this is almost chalk in my mind that this is the most Jim Harbaugh pick and it's going to be Brock Bowers. I just feel like that is a such a Jim Harbaugh Ooh. pick. He's not going to value wide receiver. Even though you look at the Chargers roster right now and that's where they probably should go, but Jim Harbaugh everywhere he has coached has not won with prioritizing wide receivers. He's won with offensive line. He's won with tight end. And I think Brock Bowers is going to be a great addition in the new offense. And he's going to win basically the same way they won at Michigan. And he's going to do that by getting players like Brock Bowers. Yeah. This is the, the, okay. the I imagine Smitty being their PR team too is like, all right, what are we saying? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we're excited about Quentin Johnson's development. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Excellent. First note. Um, oh, we're going to be a heavier Rock. rushing team. Okay, great. Yeah. But Bowers doesn't Rock. really – he blocks five. Brock will line up in the good? slot. Oh. Oh, Brock's playing receiver as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> and it's just like – Did you guys watch Dalton Kincaid last year? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Sam Laporta but with a jet pack on him. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Sign up for that every day. Uh, Broncos on the clock, and we turn back to Richie Bradshaw. So in my in my final mock that I released with all Cardinals, I had the Broncos and the Raiders taking quarterbacks here. With the Broncos trading for Zach Wilson, I think that they're basically saying, hey, we're willing to kick the can down the road a little bit and yeah. either see if someone's available in the second round or come back up at the end of the first round if you would like that fifth year option. But with the, and, and this isn't saying like Zach Wilson's a savior. It's just to me, I kind of look at it and I'm like, yeah, they're probably not going quarterback at 12. There's, there's needs throughout this roster. And I feel like they overachieve at certain positions like edge rusher. They don't really have one guy, but like, uh, is it Barrett Browning? They got a couple of edge rushers who I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bonito. they they do good work. You're just they're they're not name brand. They're you know Walmart great value kind of players. So I have to think that they're probably looking for someone on defense whose name isn't Pat Sertan to really start building this defense around. Looking at the board, I'm really interested in Quinion Mitchell. I think he's arguably the best corner in this class. Latu Latu would be a lot of fun. It would probably be between those two. Um, you could also stand to upgrade your offensive line, which is where I truly would consider Tylisi Fulaga. Uh, I, I think I probably want to just get better in my pass rush, though, and I go Latu here. Mm, okay. Like I said, I I love Law too. I hope he stays healthy. I think that this is a good pick right here. Me and you are on the same page. I think Latu Law too is just pound for pound, arguably the best defense player in this draft. As long as the medical is clear, which sounds like they have the last two years he's been healthy and he's got I, I want to say like twenty three sacks. Yeah, he's he's gonna be day one good. Like we said. Um, I love what Jake said, kind of like the in two years, where do you see him? And you still see him as like eight to 12 sacks every year. Yeah, you're going to take that in the first round. You don't think twice about it. You just want that consistency. And getting that getting that actual name mm -hmm. brand difference maker is going to get going to get more attention, I suppose. Yeah, consistency like is a great word for him. I think it's like a I think it's 27 sacks and 127 pressures. There you the go. Last two yeah. years for him. He's a monster. Which is I, just absurd. I had to watch him as a Arizona State fan. It was not fun to see him just absolutely terrorize everything we did. Caleb Williams is thrilled this man is not in his division. That First dude time. was in the backfield eight, nine times in that game. Williams is running for his life trying to do anything he could to make a play. Because that O line could not block him at all, no matter where he played. Three tech, five tech, like that's the other thing you love about him. He can he can put a hand in the dirt or he can stand up. 
end of the day, he's just going to be sacking your quarterback. Yep. He did say um, he wanted to sack Patrick Mahomes. He did. He did put that. He had like a little thing today and like goals for himself in the NFL. Well, we'll have give two times a year. Try it. <laughs> as many attempts as you could possibly get right there. Um, Tyler, just because of all the movement that has taken place with trades, you're once again on the clock with the Raiders here. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Raiders, they can get pretty wild when it comes to the first round. And I've seen a little, some more. Talk I know what you're happening. doing here. Let me go to the, let me go to him right now. I know what we're scroll. talking about. DJ Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know, I'm just looking at, um, if I'm Las Vegas, I'm looking at the team and I'm saying, is our future really Aiden O'Connell? How do I feel about him as quarterback? And as a Steelers fans, this would thrill me, but might be Gardner I, Minshew. we, we are, they do, they do have Gardner Minshew, but they're looking past that. They're looking at the future. Neither of those guys are the future, but you know what? It is the future guy who played in the Pac-12 guy who played in the Pacific Northwest. And it's funny because I'm I'm keeping two guys on the yeah. board right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You cheap <laughs> won't say he's a southpaw, or you know he throws. Right, he won't say any of that. But yeah, Although he wore a number southpaw. before. We're talking about Levin. Mike Penix Jr. <laughs> I I I think that the Raiders have serious interest in him, um, and for good reason. I think he is a good player. I think it's going to take some more development out of out of him than some of the top guys. But great arm throws the ball down the field really well. And I think another underrated part of this, because I I feel like so many people want to bring up his injury history. And I get that. I, I believe me, I do. But by the time he would be suiting up for the Raiders, he would have been three years removed from a serious injury after two stellar years at Washington. And what could have been or should have been, depending on who you are, arguably a Heisman finalist. Or not finalist, Heisman winner, winner excuse me. Um I know Richie probably feels that way. I know. Oh, he should have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the Arizona State fan feels a certain way about Jaden Daniels. Um, he is a guy, that's for sure. But I, I, I do think that the Raiders go with the quarterback here, and I, and there's, there's always a option of Bo Nix as well. But I do think they're going to like Penix Jr. better. Um, and I will just say, being the Steelers right now, I'm loving this because only two tackles have gone off the board so far. So I, I want to add this real quick. So with you taking quarterback with the Raiders, first of all, I think that's 100% what they're going to do. Penix and Knicks both make sense. What I will tell you guys, and take it with a grain of salt because I'm not in the in the war room, if Jaden Daniels is not the number two pick, I expect the Raiders mm. to move heaven and earth to get up yeah. to three. Their head coach, Antonio Pierce, recruited Jaden back when he was coming out of high school to Arizona State. Those two are incredibly close. They've not been shy about telling people, yeah, we really like Jaden. If he is not at two, and like we mentioned earlier with the Patriots, your, your quarterback's not fixing this thing. It sucks that you have to punt on this year, but it's it, if if the Raiders call up and they offer you a, a, a fortune to come up for Jaden Daniels, you take it. So... If he's not the number two pick, I'm not saying to get it done, but I think you end up hearing like, yeah, the Raiders did everything yeah. they possibly could. Sure. And I think that's an uh, important nugget to note. That's been talked about a lot within the last, I don't know, 72-ish hours with the whole Jaden Daniels maybe not taking it too well with the way that Washington went about their process with bringing guys in for meetings, uh, you know, collectively all four guys at the same time being brought in. Um Maybe some miscommunication. Who knows? But whatever. Um, if Washington <laughs> were to not take him there, that could get very interesting. But, okay, Michael Penix is going to be the pick here. Also interesting to note, just going through and looking at a uh, friend of the show, Drew Hannes, who will be here on draft night, is compiling a list for me um, of interest from teams and literally every player that they've been interested in, whether it's a you know a top 30 or uh, senior bowl, uh, combine, whatever, in any capacity that they met with a player, he's got it on there. Michael Penix Jr. and the Raiders have met three times. So, I think if there were a quarterback that isn't Jaden Daniels, if they do not make a massive trade up, he's probably the one to watch. So, Michael Penix Jr. here 
for the Vegas Raiders. And at the very least, I do think what's so disappointing is I think the arm's legit. Like, I think he has an NFL arm. But for me, that's kind of where it ends. Yeah, no, I, I think it's. Yeah, I, I think the the Raiders, it's Penix or it's it's Daniels. I agree with Richie. I'm, I'm glad he brought that up for sure, because it was it was talked yeah. about quite a bit back in like January, February, when we were just kind of starting to get going on this with a lot of the talk. Mm-hmm. So um, 14 Saints, we know what's happening here. Yeah, uh, it's Jordan Love. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, so I wanted to bring in my my heater, my relief pitcher here. Couldn't get him. Couldn't get him on the phone, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but Nate has informed me of 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 what I need to do here. Uh, okay. I I think it's very simple. It's Ramcheck's sudden health issues and Trevor mm-hmm. Penning is bad that lead me to believe that this is tackle a hundred percent. Uh, obviously would love to have Fashionu fall to the spot. I, I heard that was the Jets' fault. Um, okay, <laughs> so I don't know what happened over there. Um, but that was—I mean, that it worked out exactly thought. how the Titans thought for sure. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what happened over there. You know, we we thought you know, all was going and uh, what some happened anyway. Uh, I think this is going to actually be J.C. Latham, not Taliesa Fuanga. Um. I think to me, Latham, it seems like the NFL really likes him. Wouldn't be surprised if the Chargers are in on that uh, mm. as well, just because he can slide into right tackle immediately if they don't get mm. Bowers in a move back. Um, so for me, like, yeah, Latham, powerful, right? I think he's got really good good hand uses in pass pro, especially when, when you're in that phase where he's resetting his hands, he's working independently with his hands. I think he can get surprised a little bit with inside moves, so the agility is not the best thing uh, with him on film. But if you're trying to bull rush this man, figure out another way. It's not happening. Like he is, <laughs> he's too big, too strong, got too good sure. of a grip when he gets hands on. Like it is, it, the rep is over. Can you play him on the left side? I don't know. They have James Hurst who can play over there on the left side. He has played over there. I think you slide in Latham to be a right tackle immediately in New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, on it, you, you brought up the inside move thing. That was the one thing that I wanted to bring up, why uh, I don't necessarily love the idea of him for 20. Like People are saying that's the best-case scenario for the Steelers. I'm not on board with that being the best-case scenario for them. Yeah. Um, but, okay, yeah, J.C. Latham here you keep bring, for the Saints. You which, keep bringing up the Steelers. What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> You'll see in a little bit. Um, okay. I am pick Wait, 15 they, for the Colts. Pick? When is I, it? Oh, it's, oh, and like six picks. That's right. Yeah. That's Maybe right. Tell unless we can get on the phone, oh. unless we can get on the phone with the 49ers and see what's going on with Brandon Ayuk I over there. I see. On draft night. Um, but I for the both. time being, I got 15 for the Colts here. I have two guys in mind. And uh, Jake, you and I always talk about Chris Ballard, guys. And I'm yeah. curious between the corners who you believe is more of a Chris Ballard guy because. Quinion Mitchell being the senior bull guy jumps out to me right away. Yeah. But, you know, Cooper DeGene is also there. Terry and Arnold is also there. I lean Quinion Mitchell, but I wanted your opinion on it. Yeah, I think it's Quinion. I, I think you brought up the idea and the possibility of Cooper DeGene. I think that's backup mm-hmm. plan if Mitchell's not available, which I think is possible, right? You look at, you know, Denver and, and Vegas. If Vegas isn't going QB, but we think they are, I think those are spots that are in play for Mitchell. Yeah, I think that's a Ballard guy, hundred percent. Lock it in; he's available. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's been a pretty popular one for me that I've I've mocked them. Like it, that, that, they're also the place for the the Brock Bauer slide potentially, like to stop that. I would say, but um, yeah, Quinion Mitchell has been a, a popular one for me if he if he gets to that spot. So I'm I'm good with that. It just uh, makes 16, too much sense. Sixteen on the clock here. The Seattle Seahawks, controlled by. Your boy, Richie. So I would love to see who would be interested in coming up for like a Fuaga, but I just don't know how realistic that is right now. I mean, I really liked them taking Jerzon Newton 
for a long time, but mm. with them bringing back Leonard Leonard Williams, I just don't think that that's a round one need anymore. Plus, Byron Murphy is also really good. I don't think you can justify taking another corner round one. I know Reek Wilson definitely took a step back last year, but even beyond him, you got Kobe Bryant. You obviously have Devin Witherspoon. Like, it, you'd be putting a hat on a hat if you took another corner. Right here, I don't know if you guys would be surprised by this, but I would look at Troy Fontanu and move him to guard. That's the that's the pick for me, to be honest with you, especially because he can kick out to tackle. Abe Lucas has obviously had the health concerns right. uh, last year, really couldn't stay healthy. So I think Fatanu is a perfect pick for them. Honestly, I think this is also where the Graham Barton conversation starts, is this pick. I would agree. I happens, but I think it's where the conversation begins. Do you guys ever have those like players where it's just like you think about them and you're like, oh, that's totally this team's kind of player? Yes. Mainly with the Raiders and Colts. Yes. <laughs> I feel like Raiders, Latu. Not good. Um. I feel like Latu would just look so good in the Seahawks uni. But he's not there, obviously. Yeah. Right. Which would be my other conversation is you've got Uchenna Nwusu coming back from an ACL tear. Boye Mafe is a stud. He needs a partner in crime. To me, it's Fontanu. Or you take a look at Jared Verse, too. Ooh. And... I think, like you said about Abe Lucas, is mm -hmm. I would give the edge to the offensive lineman here. So I am going to take Troy Fontanu. But you definitely are in the room saying, hey, we got Jared Verse here. And he may not be Dallas Turner, but he's still like back-to-back -back nine sack seasons after coming up from junior college or whatever it was. He's still really yeah. good. <clears throat> I just love the versatility that Fatanu gives me here. So that would be my pick I know it's not Fatanu. it's not as sexy to say for edge defenders too that they're like able to set the edge and really good as run defenders because everybody just wants to look like the the pressure totals and the sack production. Sacks. Jared yep. Verse is going to be very good against the run like immediately. And I don't know him, if you can 100% yeah. say that about Dallas Turner and him and Mafe yeah. just sound like fun off the edge. Yeah. Yeah. So I like it. I like the pick. Um, the Jaguars, Tyler. Okay. So uh, my pick, I'm looking at the needs of the Jacksonville Jaguars, looking at the future of the cornerback room. And they did mm -hmm. sign Ronald Darby this off season, but it's just a one term, one year deal. And yeah. they also um, have Tyson Campbell. He's in a contract year. And so what's the future of that look like? And behind that, not really a lot going on. And so looking at corner, you could try to get somebody that's like more nickel exclusive, like you could look at Cooper DeGene, um, or you could do what I think they, they should do or would do and go with a guy that could play outside, could play inside some versatility and get Terry on Arnold, who, I mean, depending on who you ask, best corner in the draft, depending on situation and everything i think that they need to get a solidified piece for the future of the secondary and a guy that could play inside or outside in the future is great or especially safety if you can be, stick with an outside guy or safety um but if they did roll with darby and uh have, have campbell on the outside and then you have uh terry and arnold at least for this year focus on some nickel on the inside i think that that could help them a lot in the defense but you need to secure some future because after this year, looking at some of the contracts that they have with, with their defensive backs corner specifically, they don't really have a lot going on and they need to improve the secondary. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good pick. Also a, becoming, I feel like a pretty popular one as we get down the home stretch here uh, to the draft. So uh, since Arnold, Bengals right? on the what? Yeah. Arnold, mm -hmm. Terry yeah. and Arnold was the pick. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I scrolled past it already. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Um, no, no. That being said, <laughs> I still haven't done it yet. <laughs> it can't happen. It can't there's, happen. There's time. It's entirely uh, possible. The Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. That is Jake Shavink. It is. Uh, this is very, very easy. Just pick the other LSU receiver. No. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no can do. No can do. Uh, this is this is Taliesa Fuanga for sure. Uh Fall to 18, we'll take that all day. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, he's played right tackle. 
a bunch. You don't have a lot there. I know you signed Trent Brown to a, to a one year deal. There's a lot of guys on that old line on one year deals right now. There's not a lot of long term, you know, plan at offensive line. I think they got to do it here. I would I would love the opportunity to put Byron Murphy or, or Johnny Newton in this defense. Absolutely, but Burroughs he's got two season ending injuries. We can't be doing this anymore. Like no matter what, either Fuanga to me is playing right tackle, or if the issues to me with the outside hand and, and not getting enough good grip strength out there, not not hanging on to rushers out there when they're trying to threaten outside, he clicks into guard and he plays really well there. Either way, I think you're getting a starter long term for this team, and they need it. They need it. So. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Good pairing. How do you say it, Taliesa? I, I so on on Oregon State's website it is Taliesa. It's four okay. syllables. I've heard everyone else say it. And then there's an N Taliesa. in the last. There is yeah. an N in the last name. It is Fumanga. Okay, yeah. which has not been used a lot. Yeah, which <laughs> so it's all over right. the place. I'm there's no chance Goodell's getting it right. We know that. Like you better <laughs> be tuning in for one. this one. It's not happening. I think he's going to use two syllables, he's gonna, or he's going to use. He's probably five. should call him. He's just trying to make it seem like cool and like we're, tally, 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 F, tally, F. tally F. <laughs> I mean, okay, I will say, being a BYU fan, I am very familiar with a lot of Polynesian names. Mm -hmm. Typically, all the vowels do have a syllable. So if you have an I and an E together, you pronounce both. You don't. You don't. They're not combined. You pronounce right. them separately. So it should be tally, tally, asa. Fuanga. That's what Oregon State has yeah. on their website. That's what I've been using. I've seen two syllables, three syllables. Goodell might bring out the five syllable. Who knows? <laughs> it might Probably be S C A. Yeah, it might. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it might be. A, no, that's you should. I wish there was like betting money. Tali S C A Fajan. <laughs> you have it, Richie. I, you have it. It's, it's that's perfect. Perfect. Um, that'd be a fun prop bet. Yeah, Whoever just like said me. like what what Goodell would say. Oh, yeah. that'd be such a or fun like prop bet. player with the worst pronunciation through like two days of the draft. Like, oh, it's yeah. just, it would be a tremendous. Let's, you know what? We'll, let's put together the line in the chat. Him and the Yale tackle would have yeah, the best names. Yeah, no chance he's getting that right either. No <laughs> chance. Um, Okay, so I'm on the clock with the Rams. And I actually like the way the board fell. Um, you should. Jared Verse would be a good fit for them. They could use trenches on either side of that. So... I think offensive tackle as well as the DT should be in play. There's a guy, if I'm if I'm less right now, one, I'm absolutely shocked that we have this pick still. And two, I just realized Aaron Donald retired again as we're sitting here making this pick. <laughs> so um, I'm between Verse and Johnny Newton, to be honest with you, I think. You'd go, we're you'd go Newton go, over Murphy? I would. I would. I like Newton's up, upside as a pass rusher a bit more. I think who's I think who's the kid they have really right now? Kobe Turner, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Him yeah and, Kobe Turner and Kobe Turner and Johnny Newton's sick. That would be disgusting. Plus, yeah. you'd have yeah. uh, Byron like Young on the outside. Pounds. Yeah, Byron Young too. Yeah. It, it'd so, be a really yeah, fun. I've talked myself. I've rush. talked myself into it. We're doing Johnny Newton. I was going to say verse and Kobe Turner on one half of the. Op going at one half of the offensive line would be a lot of fun too. Like they're a great sure. Spot. I don't think you can go wrong with any of those three, the two D linemen and verse. I think you also look at the gene, but you, you absolutely need to get better up front without Donald. Yeah. Uh, here we go. This is the pick. Everybody came for pick number 20, the Pittsburgh Why? Steelers on the clock. Tyler, before departing for Europe, I thought it would only be right that I gave you this selection for the Steelers to make. Well, I appreciate that. And you know, the way the board fell, it pretty much lines up with what I think the Steelers would like to do. Now, there's a lot of talk about the, what they're going to do at this pick, and mm -hmm. like l l that also depends on how it falls. But before I make the pick, I want to get Richie and Jake's opinion on what, not necessarily what they think the Steelers will do, but if you were the Steelers, and you can ignore this board that we have, but say... Basically, they have a lot, a lot of options when it comes to um, if there's a center available, tackles, um, a cornerback. Like, what would you do if you were in the Steelers scenario and you actually like the Steelers, Richie? So, <laughs> here, here's the thing. 
I can turn off my bias when it comes to the draft because I, I just love the draft. But mm. I've said for at least a month, maybe two months now, Jackson Powers Johnson just feels like a stealer. They know what they're mm. doing when they draft the position. Is a high-level guy. Like, sure, he plays center. It's not sexy, but he he feels like immediate plug-and-play at a, at a high level. I am really curious with Amirius Mims being available having having him and Broderick Jones reunite and Jones stay on the right side and uh, Mims take over left and you have your bookends and not just bookends. I mean, you have massive dudes that are just bodyguards for Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. You have a really good situation there. I think something that's really overlooked right now is Cooper DeGene because I don't know that we're going to be anticipating him to be available, but there's a need for another corner opposite of JPJ. And I like the idea of getting Cooper. And if there's someone there that I'm not thinking of, then you just put him in the slot. And he's also got the upside as a return man. Like this is pound for pound. He might be the best special teams returner in the draft. I mean, he's special. So I would be between those three if you're asking me to make the pick, I probably go Mims because of the tackle value. And then in theory, I have my bookends. Before Jake jumps in with what he would do, I will say the reason you can't think of who the other corners are is because they basically just don't have any. Especially if you're thinking sure. of a, especially if you're thinking of a nickel corner. Uh they they literally do not have one on the roster right now. So the Joe Hayden's the, not there anymore. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Fort Smitty and I, were, Smitty and I, on our show this week, are literally talking about the they, best case scenario might be re-signing Patrick Peterson to just be your nickel this year. If they brought back Joe Hayden right now, he's CB two. <laughs> that is. <laughs> if they waited, the Cortez Allen are still out there. I think if they waited five more years from now to bring him back, <laughs> he would be CB two. <laughs> I mean, Dante Jackson, Corey so Trice, who I like. And Darius Dante Rush, Jackson, who I like. I forgot about him. That is, and they There's all play like yeah, Dante Jackson has tried to play in the slot before. He can't tackle. He doesn't help in run support. But he's he can't fast. do what they ask of their slots. He is. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jake, what do you think, though? Yeah, I, I, I personally would not take Thomas here. Um. I'm not thrilled with that. I, I think there are some tremendous values later in the draft. Smitty knows. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about receiver. Um, Javon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get that man on your team. Uh, yeah, the fact that there are two corners on here signed past 2024, and one of them is Corey Trice, who fell because of medical stuff. And, like, you know, listen, we, I think a lot of us loved him in the draft. But, like, mm-hmm. I, I think you could. A lot I of wouldn't, yeah, I, I don't think you could go wrong with Wiggins or Kool-Aid personally. I think Kool-Aid's excellent, extremely patient player. I know the long speed's a big concern. There's really nothing else. Uh, and then obviously Nate Wiggins, who's tremendous in coverage. But as a wise man once said, let Andy Weidel cook. <laughs> Amarius Mims or Graham Barton is probably what I would do here. Graham Barton also my, really either good. one. My my pushback and, and you're right in terms of like Wiggins is a good shout because of the interest. He's yeah. one of the three like him, Graham Barton and Mims are the three that check the boxes for the Steelers in terms of the visits required that in the past have meant this is going to be a first round pick. So certainly makes sense. But when I look at him and go and watch the film, obviously zone heavy corner. That's what Clemson runs a little bit light. I know he added nine pounds for the combine to the pro day, but still rather light frame. Um, is he going to be able to help out and run support the way that the Steelers asked their corners to do? No. And is he going to be able to play press? Ma- like that? So I just think there's a lot of questions in terms of the scheme fit for him. While I do like him as a player for most other places, don't necessarily yeah. love him for Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, that, okay. Smitty, when you said it like that, it brought me back to, you know, with Tyler going like, Will Levis might be a good quarterback. And you're just like, no. <laughs> this is one of the greatest moments of your it was life. also last year during last year during the draft i know you watched it back so you definitely I've remember watched this it back moment. so many times uh, when everyone know. was like after the the colts took richardson someone's like so what do the titans do and i was like oh, oh yeah 
they're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that, that, that was a pretty similar scenario this year in this draft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> run it oh, back. Who was the Titans GM last back. year? Run it back. Oh, my um, gosh. For this, I don't know. It's a great question. Well, wait, it was they me. They probably got fired. And... I moved up. Wait. In this, in this, in this, I moved up for Richardson. It's a three. Yeah, you yeah. did. You did. Man, I with the Titans. Okay, I mean, you're, you're batting 500. I think personally, <laughs> so they did fine. get Will Levis in the yeah. second round too. They did. That's a value, baby. Yep. All right, so Steelers, we've oh yeah had a lot of conversation about it. Yeah, <laughs> I and Smitty and I have a lot, had a lot of conversations about it um, on around the four one two on our podcast, and uh, it's it's a very polarizing question of who they're going to pick i feel like in pittsburgh because in years past this is the first time i feel like there's not really a chalk answer from anyone that they know who they're going to pick really since like 2019 for the steelers um and so i think when you look at like the positions themselves i think corner makes a ton of sense i just don't think they're going to i I think if like terry and arnold is there and he somehow falls to 20 i think it's an easy pick but outside of that, I just don't think that the other guys are really on the Steelers' radar for what they want to do. And if you're throwing positional value out the window, and if it was me drafting, I think specifically for an Arthur Smith offense, they need to secure the center position. Because as of right now, it looks like their best option might just be re-signing Mason Cole and rolling the dice next year if they don't draft a center this year. And that would be awful. But in the Arthur Smith offense, you have to have good center play. So if it was me, I would throw the positional value out there and probably draft either Graham Barton, who would probably be the more likely of the two. Um, I would personally draft Jackson Powers Johnson. But from the Steelers' perspective, I think Barton would be their guy. But I'm going to go with what I think the pick will be if the board falls correctly. And I know the last time Smitty and I spoke um, about it, he was in agreement with me. I think they're going to take Mims. I think they're going to get the Georgia tackles. And, I mean, it just makes too much oh. sense, too, for how they like their tackles as well. I feel like the Steelers just love guys who are just absolute mountains and just huge body tackles. And to be able to sure up and protect their two new quarterbacks that they have in the system and to get those bookends from Georgia – I think it makes too much sense, and I think that the writing on the wall is on the wall for that pick more so than a lot of Steeler fans would probably like to see. Just because I feel like the focus is so much on center right now amongst the fan base. If I can ask real quick, is there and it has to be realistic? Obviously, it's not Caleb Williams. Is there a player that like Steeler fans universally would say if he's available that? that uh what's it called stereotype of like you run to the podium for this guy is is there really that person because i know you said there's not this consensus like oh yeah that's going to be who the pick is for a few years honestly i don't know that there's a there is one if there is any i think that the position that you probably do that the most is if if you get into a scenario where terry and arnold is falling you might be able to see that where they could trade up a few spots for him. The, the um, highest like, ranked cross. Yeah, maybe they jump the Jaguars to, to yeah, try to take exactly. Seattle. But I, I don't think that they, like, I don't think they move up for any of the other tackles. I think they just kind of see what falls to them at that point. The highest ranked prospect they've shown any interest in was obviously they, they met with Rome, but like, that's obviously not happening. Um, <laughs> yeah. The most, like, I mean, the, if Rome one- went to like 12, then you're like, okay, do it. But, Nah, yeah. Buffalo will have long moved up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree with Terry and Arnold. That was the one I was going to say. Okay. I mean, took him to dinner, him and Kool Aid, um, and Dallas Turner. I guess they just invited him along for the ride. But um, yeah, I would say Dallas Terry and Arnold is probably the dinner? one. <laughs> yeah, love it. So, uh, yeah, like, Terry all right, and Arnold Dolphins. make it to fifteen or sixteen. Would that's they? Where you'd see it. Would they be interested in Latham or Fuanga if they oh. fall there? Fuanga. Yes, Fuanga for Fuanga, sure, and, yes. and they might no. Okay, okay. I, I was answering that as if it was me for a second. Oh, oh. them, them. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, they, they, uh, I, guess I actually the think same way. <laughs> I think I think Fatanu would be the guy, and with the recent the news today about like the knee, maybe yes. if he were to fall to twenty because of that, I think that he would be 
their guy for sure. Like he would be the one that changes the conversation that we've been having about Mims or Barton as the yeah. likely pick. I think he's the one that throws a wrench into it. Love Fotanu. But I'm pretty sure that they don't even know Fuanga exists because he lives on the West Coast. Oh. <laughs> well, is that just hey, that? he was here? He was here for the 30. <laughs> okay. So did they just throw darts that. at like the Pac-12 prospects are just like All if, right, if that you guy, look, that I mean, guy. there's like there's oddballs like obviously like Juju Smith Schuster is probably the most famous one in recent history that came from like a West Coast school, but if you just look at the Steelers drafts, they do not cross the Mississippi River that often. It, Ooh, it's like this there's, is the year where like it, they had like the West Coast football so good this year, so good, yeah. There's too much talent, like they West have Coast, to best coast. Yeah. All right. Let's so. <laughs> Bring back the conference. right now. I wish I was on the West Coast because of the time that it currently is. As I look at my clock here, oh, that conference can um, go to hell. So, um, but Richie, that being said, you are on the clock now for the Miami Dolphins. I like the top three defenders on the board here between Cooper DeGene, Byron Murphy, Jared Verse. The reason why I think Verse is a really underrated prospect here is I know that Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb are both very, very good, but you know what they have in common. They're coming off ACL tears. And Van Ginkle out the door. Is he an edge? He yeah. Depends I mean, he was their edge three last edge. year, but yeah. gotcha. where did he even Minnesota? I think he went to Minnesota. Yeah, he's with Flores now. Gotcha. And I mean, even when Phillips and Chubb get back to 100 percent health, you can never have too many pass rushers in the uh in the cupboard. So mm-hmm. I think about verse there with the Gene and Murphy available. It's between those two, but lost Christian Wilkins. That's the thing. You lose Christian Wilkins. You take a strong look at Murphy. You lose Xavier Howard. You take a look at the gene. I mentioned what I like about the gene from the athleticism standpoint and potentially having him as like a special teams ace for you. I, I really Mm. feel like this could be a hold on before we go further with the special teams thing. That would be the most disgusting team on those kickoff returns. They could oh, throw yeah. Tyreek back oh, there, no. Raheem, Achan, Cooper, and Xavier Waddle. And Waddle. Question mark. Oh my goodness! Just, worthy, anyway, one and rotate them. Team? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. It'd be disgusting, but I mean, I, I look at the roster. You have Jalen Ramsey and some guys who can fill some gaps. Like Kendall Fuller's fine. No one else mm-hmm. on the in the corner room really speaks to me. Defensive tackle room, there's really not anyone because not only do you not have not have uh, uh, Christian Wilkins anymore, but uh, who was the Bama guy that they had? Oh, I can't think of his name. Shoot. Oh, it's gonna piss me off. Who you're talking about? Uh, Raquan tackle? Davis. Raquan yes. Davis. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So you don't have either of them. I, I really do feel like this is kind of up in the air. If you wouldn't mind, let me float it to you guys and see what you guys think. I am on the Byron Murphy train for them. Byron Murphy, Tyler. Mm-hmm. I like Byron Murphy, but I also like throwing the, uh, the little asterisks out there. I think maybe what if, what if McDaniels can't help himself and he just wants the speed. So he just goes Xavier worthy. <laughs> but see, like, that, with the speed though, right? Like you can have worthy speed at like what? 165, 166. You can also have 433, 200 plus Brian Thomas, too. Mm hmm. You know? Or Adonai. I just. Or Adonai. Yeah. It, this isn't that much. Honestly, if it weren't um, Byron Murphy, I might take a look at like offensive line help. And that wouldn't be bad either. I just don't like that Mims is off the board. Barton could be an option. Um, mm-hmm. And that wouldn't be a bad option either. Uh, Jake, what do you think before I round out where I think I'm going to end up going here? I, yeah, I, I, it feels like if one of Newton or Murphy are there, I think they're going to, they're going to go that way. I, I do like what you're saying about, you know, the uncertainty with edge rusher. And if you're going to, to me, at least like this class at edge rushers, like you want one, you better get one early. This is it's not like a deep three. group. Yeah, it's not a deep group. If you believe in Chop, awesome. You believe in like Marshawn Nealon's potential, sure. It's just it's very thin. I think defensive tackle got underrated this whole process. Oh yeah, I did. I did it too. 
and I feel like I, I see like seven, eight, nine guys where I'm like, oh yeah, nice. This is, this guy could contribute at the very least. And like, so, but you don't have, you know, Byron Murphy from all those guys. So I, so I would probably lean Murphy. It's, and I think that's the direction I'm going to go. Um, there's, there's plenty of possibilities you can throw out there for the dolphins, but at the end of the day, you just lost a top 10 at worst defensive tackle. And the best you can do is Byron Murphy. Uh, I, I do like the depth in this class. I mean, even Murphy's teammate to Vondre Sweat wouldn't be bad if he even gets drafted at this point. But I, I, I definitely would probably lean toward, toward Murphy. I'm glad the consensus also kind of leans towards that as well. Byron Murphy. Okay. All right. Well, I'm on the phone with myself. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's okay. no no question. Buffalo sending a first in the 2025 third to Philly right now to go get Brian Thomas Jr. It's not even a question. That's it. That's that's the that's what's happening here. We, we can't. Sorry, Philly. We can't send you 20 2024 third. We t- send it to Green Bay. Um, can't help you there. But would this uh, do it? It's all it would just, take. Just two ones. I think well maybe maybe throw Minnesota second in there I guess perhaps. I th- the trade charts told me it was a, a third rounder, but obviously I don't have Jeez. that this year. Okay. Yeah. I mean it took so, what Green Bay what, Green Bay gave a fourth rounder. To so go if it up. was a third a third this year would be a second next year like equal value probably yeah. So you're saying twenty eight sixty and a future one? No. What? No no. What 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 what? No. 28 in a in next year's second. Yeah. And next year's second. Yeah. That's it. Just yeah. those two. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I heard least, second least... and then I thought I oh. heard one. Oh, a, like a second one. Is that yeah, I got gotcha. you. All right, well that got rejected, but we'll see here. <laughs> when doesn't it on the first time, you know? Yeah. That's why you get PFF and you just click that four straight option. Yeah, heck yeah, man. Shout out Donnie Druin for letting me borrow his account. <laughs> I do have PFF actually. I just I like PFN well. Simulator more. That's fair. Um, just give them the one. Yeah. It's a. It's a. We it's threw the integrity a, out a long time ago. A, so. Yeah. It was. It was a second or a third. We're fine. We're giving Brian Thomas. There's not much else needs to be said about this. The Bills fair. have this opportunity. They're going to go take it. Josh Allen throwing deep balls to Brian Thomas Jr. might yield another 17 touchdowns for him. Back-to-back seasons, like, you know, LSU and Buffalo. Like, that's not Yeah, it didn't take the ridiculous trade-up. Like, Right. Thought, like, we, hey, we were on the phone, though, I will say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but this way, I think Philly, this is an offensive line loaded draft. And I mm-hmm. think Philly would be fine with a lot of guys at the end of round one. Flirted with the idea of taking Barton if I stayed there. I think with Philly, uh, you know, center and tackle, but I, I think this makes sense for both sides. Yep. Uh, and Tyler, you were on the clock with the Chargers. Ring, ring, Getting ring, ring, ring. Uh, oh, we have a call. Who is it? <laughs> Hello, this is uh, Monty Austin Ford, the Arizona Cardinals. No, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call uh, back. <laughs> Yes. I think Jake's waiting Would on you like- the other line. I'm on, I'm on hold right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's hear your first proposal, and then I have another call. Well, ten minutes goes I'm, fast. So I'm looking to move up from 27 to 23. So just four okay. little spots, and then I was thinking I'll offer you uh, 104 to go with it. Hmm. I don't need anything in return, and I'll throw you an extra fourth round pick. Okay. Let me put you on hold. Okay. Transfer the call. Hello? Who's calling? Hi, this is Adam Peters with the Washington Commanders. Um, oh. How you doing, sir? On this uh, I'm doing, I was doing better until I realized you don't have a first-round pick right now. So here's the deal. <laughs> we do have 36 and 40. Oh, We're not going to part true. with both of them, but I'd be willing to give you 36 and 67 for this pick right now. I'm also no. on the line. <laughs> It's the Titans, isn't it? Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me put you on hold. All right. All right. Sounds good. 
Hello? How are you doing? Mike Tomlin, Pittsburgh Steelers. He put me on hold. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I'll get back. What can I do for you, Mike? Um, not much. What's going on? <laughs> what, are you, what are you calling for? <laughs> Just wanted to see what was up, what you were thinking here with this pick. Well, you know, I, as I sit here right now, I'm not sure because – some of the, the some of the players I was hoping might may be here, uh, they're gone. Like some of the tackles, they're gone. I think he, the I could go center here. Jackson Powers Johnson seems pretty attractive in this pick from the Chargers, uh, especially with Jim Harbaugh offense. You know they're going to be running mm-hmm. the football, secure the the center of that offensive line. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. I've got some some guys on the phone. I don't really I'm not really that interested in on. I'm just putting on hold right now, but. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. What are you thinking? Nothing. I'm actually I'm about to get going. So. I'll okay. Talk sounds good. Have fun t- talking to Amarius. <laughs> okay. Uh, who do I want to talk to first? Cardinals or the Commanders? Uh, I'll pick up with the phone with the Cardinals. All right. So you want to trade 27? You want to move up to 23? What are you willing to give up besides 27? What are you also you offering? Well, we got 104 for the fourth round pick. Jesus. And because I really like you, I'll throw in a future fifth. Hmm. All I want to do hmm. is move up four spots. You know, I do like the idea of being able to still pick in the first round, not moving back that far. Hold on. Let me talk to this guy in Washington real quick. Hello? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, we're not doing it. Hang up. Okay, (laughs) sounds good. All right. Talk to you later. (laughs) See ya. Love you, bye. (laughs) All right. Arizona, I like the deal because I'm not in love making a pick right here because of the way the board fell. I think there's some guys that could still be there in a few picks that I'd be interested in taking. So let's let's do it. Let's get, give me, uh, I'll I'll do that trade if, if the simulator will allow us. What's the trade? The so trade is trading 27, 27 106 104, or 104 and a future fifth. What I'm trading for. <laughs> hey, he said, he, he said just hang up. That... Oh, they hate us because of Snyder. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of friends. I get it. Okay. It's actually the name. It just 27, 104, and what would you say, a fourth? Uh, and a future year? fifth. Oh, wow. fifth. I might have to make it a fourth. The simulator might not like it. Simulators. <gasps> if 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 we get one to go through the first go, we are. It's gonna be like celebration on this. PFF oh says it's a hundred percent chance to be accepted. So, I think Zach's just bad at this. Just My do gosh. the two first. Just, just do the two yeah. first. We're not picking outside of the first round. <laughs> just do the two first. Oh, oh man, oh. this is so ridiculous, though. Can you imagine how long this video would be if we did a full seven round march? <laughs> Smitty, Derek, and I did a three rounder. Yeah, it was probably like three what hours. three hours. Three hours. Oh. Yep, nailed it. All right. And so, what's Arizona coming up for? I think you're really happy with both the Gene and Verse on the board, but what we said earlier about those edge rushers. If you like one, you got to get one of the top three because other outside of that you are either hoping that you're bored and you're uh what if, room what if is... one of my top three isn't isn't here meaning then you're crazy <laughs> meaning two of my top three are gone but one of them's still on the board even if you were to take verse are you a chop Robinson guy nope set it up to Michigan Bay B mm. I don't know. Anyway, Smitty being weird. Jared first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make sure Jared I get Bruce. an edge rusher I like. Um, this is fair. I don't know that I'm worried about the Cowboys, Packers, or Bucks necessarily, but I am worried that someone else might try and jump up and four picks. That includes for the draft or the NFL playoffs. <laughs> True. <laughs> but this is also the Cardinals we're talking about. Oh, man. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm on the clock for the Cowboys. Um, Richie, just to be, Trey, you should Trey be Benson. Goody will take an edge rusher anytime he wants. Okay, he, I'm looking Trey Benson. Doesn't even matter. He just do it. So 
I'm looking Trey Thank Benson here, maybe. For me. I'm smarter than I look. What are we doing? What? <laughs> Pretend I was tra- taking Trey, Trey Benson. Benson. 24. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? No, uh, this is either JPJ or Barton for me. Um, trying to stay predictively as possible. I think Barton goes first, so we're going to take Graham Barton here. The flexibility... <clears throat> to kick around, uh, depending on where he starts. I have no clue. Um, I think most teams will try him at center. So, perfect 10 RAS at center, by the way. Graham Barton's the pick of 24 for me with the Cowboys. Is Graham Barton the what we should have done with Joe Williams prospect? Hmm. I like that. We'll, we'll see if people learned. I mean, he hasn't taken a snap in the NFL yet, so maybe they're going to do the same thing. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, I feel like... Dallas Dallas could do it because you know it depends on you know are you moving Tyler Smith over to left tackle obviously mm-hmm. you lost Beatish so it like Barton would slide in there and they've have not been afraid to take centers in the first right Travis Frederick so watch that they're going to take Barton on day one and people think that's going to be the center and then they're going to take Zach Frazier in the second round and people are going to be like, wait a minute whoa yeah we're actually pl- and then it's going to be the curveball it's like no no Barton's playing left guard Tyler Smith's playing left tackle and then Frazier's <laughs> playing center it's just absolute insanity there. Jerry's just like How, how's the right side? Oh, it's okay, but look at this left side. Yeah, they're moving Zach Martin to right tackle. There you go. There you go. They'll take they'll take someone. You know, there's some guards later in the middle rounds that can they can do that. Three three offensive line picks would be awesome. Uh, another highly anticipated pick here, twenty five, the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, so I think the three players for them are on the screen. Um. Okay. Yeah. Not not the top. Guy. Are they still on the uh, screen? <laughs> <laughs> listen could they take marshawn neeland here sure they could I, by the way that was my that's who i was saying about the edge yeah players. that's who he was talking about richie was the I, um, I don't know anything about him i'll be totally frank but he's my he's my edge three in front of jared big, verse big dude 6'3 267 big big fella on the edge oh, elephant rusher then yeah yeah gotcha. i know that i know them well um <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, Green Bay, I think, goes. I, I, Cooper DeGene's in play for them for sure, but I do think, like, if I were to, if you were to tell me one of two players right now, it's either Kool Aid or it's Tyler Guyton. Tyler mm-hmm. Guyton fits on pretty much everything you look at for a Green Bay offensive lineman. Uh, he's like him and I think Traven Wallace are like the tier one fits right now for Green Bay just across the draft. So they could definitely go that direction. I'm going to take Kool Aid. I want to pair him with, with Jair. I want to cook in that secondary. Okay. I, 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 to me, it would be a home run. Honestly, I. Yeah, I mean, I. You guys just haven't been able to replace Kevin King. Yeah, and what he brought. Tried it with Eric Stokes. Oh. Like, <laughs> just let's let's get it straightforward here. Let's 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 get Kool Aid in the building. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those two, and I, I'm gonna pick Kool Aid here. Gotcha. I feel like Kool Aid's like now underrated. I think we've gotten to that point. Yep, I 100% agree. 100%. Um, all right, 26, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I ring, ring, ring. For some reason. So, oh. Again. Tyler right. is picking, but Richie's calling him. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hey there. This is the Arizona Cardinals. How are you doing? Oh, my gosh. This These guys again? <laughs> this guy. Bobby's insane. <laughs> where, do you, where do you even pick next? 35. 35. Top of the second. Yeah. Uh, we actually <sighs> traded that to force that first trade. <laughs> I mean, tough, realistically, you do still have that, but that we had to tough, trade man. it. To... <laughs> so funny. Well, you better figure it out. <laughs> okay. All right. How quick can I change the PFF simulator? <laughs> Here's well, the problem. If if it gives you problems, if if we make this trade, if it gives you problems, just have the Buccaneers take this uh, selection. Here's the issue I have. Hit me. Is that the position I want? I don't think it's going to be worth picking at 35, but it is worth picking right now. Go on. So <laughs> hang up the phone. <laughs> oh, man. Because my guy's not going to be there at 35. Okay. So if you look at the Buccaneers depth chart right now, you look at our depth chart right now. We have the four of us coming off of the edge right now. That's basically <laughs> how it works. Uh, for y- 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 sick though. Hold on. 
Yeah. Okay. He, the Yaya Diaby slander <laughs> will not be tolerated in here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like Joe okay. Tryon Trayankas. Yeah, and... that hasn't worked. Let me look at the Buccaneers official depth chart. They've got Yaya listed on one side. The mm-hmm. other side is blank right now. That's okay. Funny. And then the other two Arthur? guys are the other two He's guys are old, listed man. behind them. <laughs> They're listed behind a blank spot. Because they know that they don't have another starting edge rusher. <laughs> they, they're, they're just like, these guys are not starters. They're our backups. <laughs> so, so the only other That's viable option game. right here, the, the Buccaneers are going to take Chop Robinson because they need to get another edge rusher off the other side. Okay. They're going to get a guy that good first step, good penetration in the backfield. There's a reason that Michigan – uh, ran the ball like 30 times in a row, and it's because they didn't want to deal with Chop Robinson coming off of the edge when it comes to playing. Are we sure it didn't have State? anything to do with J.J. McCarthy? Listen, it could be both, but <laughs> that doesn't mean that one isn't true. <laughs> so, so I think it makes too much sense. They li- Literally, their official depth chart is blank on their other starter. Yeah, yeah. If that's this has actually telling, been a pretty popular pick. Trevor Sikkim has talked about this one a lot chop robinson so yeah i like it you gotta love just imagine you're in the buccaneers war room and it's like hey boss you remember joe try on shoyinka let's do it again (laughs) yeah and here's the thing is like this time it's gonna work if they would have traded down to 35 is does chop robinson make it there i mean maybe Mm. but you after the fall off after him I feel like it would be too big yeah. to, to for the for the positional value at that pick. So that's why we Richie, does that. he not kind of seem like a Ravens guy? Not saying that they would do it, but like if they had the, the need definitely for an edge. I don't want you wishing that on me. I think <laughs> I just I think they love I their Penn so. State guys. Uh it, it's the same thing. Hey, remember Adafe Owe? Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same 100%, 100%. thing. hundred percent. So great athlete. Um love the upside. Can you get in there? Yeah. That's that that's the thing. Okay. And like NFL teams love that. They love those big balls of clay that they in theory mm-hmm. can turn into Aaron Donald and TJ Watt and the other elite defenders of the world. But more often than not, it, it's a lot more difficult than people realize. So he could be in play. I will tell you if it happens on draft night, I'll have to talk myself into it over the offseason. If it, if that's who they draft, we're FaceTiming you while we're on the stream. <laughs> I am not going to be um, well. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I appreciate you holding back and using the word well there, um, as opposed to what you were originally thinking of saying. Um, (laughs) Okay. uh, 27 on the clock. Tyler, uh, the Chargers, are we going to make a pick here? Why do I I feel like I've traded back so often that I've just been picking several times in a row? Whenever I do pick, is, Who, is it is it the Cardinals again? It might be. You got to pick up the pull phone up my shotgun out. and sh- open up the window to shoot that damn bird. <laughs> Let me guess. They want to offer thirty five that they don't have in this draft. The, the Cardinals war room is trying to tie Monty to a chair. Right now. They're like, buddy, just stop doing things, bro. No, I again. I think that I got to stick with the pick. And because I think that the, this one is going to be one that I feel like, and this isn't necessarily what I think they should do. I already but hung I, up. I feel like it is a Jim Harbaugh esque pick. And mm. I kind of alluded to it earlier. Um, but I think that they should go center because of the style of run game that they're going to have. I think center is a need on the Chargers. And I think they're going to take Jackson Powers Johnson here. Okay. Who have you picked? So why'd for you these say guys? this is. Bowers and Powers Johnson. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's sick. Yeah, I think Bowers, that's, those are those are Jim Harbaugh picks. Yeah. When they picked also pick. Well, no, never well, mind. They didn't pick a thirty five. They didn't pick up all those. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. But Jackson Powers Johnson there um, yeah. brings us to the Eagles, who had already traded down from twenty two. Right. Yeah. Jake, you traded with yourself with the Bills. I did. So you're on the you're clock right. here at twenty eight. Yeah. This will be Cooper to Gene. Um, nice. I think the just the the way that that he can fit into what the Eagles want to do defensively. I think there's a chance he can play three spots in that secondary, and 
yeah. depending on how they I think split field safety would be an adjustment for him. That would be that's a massive projection. Right, but I do think he can come in and play nickel immediately. If they want their nickel cornerback to tackle, blitz, do all of these things, DeGene can do that. You want to play outside and you feel comfortable with him in zone coverage, he can do that. So I think that is a really, really nice fit for Philly. They trade down and they land DeGene, a player I was considering at 22. That was um, what I was trying to do, was get ahead of Philly, because I knew DeGene wasn't going to get past yeah. them. That is 100% was it? everything I was trying to do. Yeah. Tyler was it a, to uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it a conversation at all for you, Jake, between DeGene and Wiggins? Because secondary definitely makes sense. Yeah, but. no, it, it is. I just think <clears throat> Rose, Howie Roseman's like big guys, right? Defensive line, offensive mm-hmm. line. Yeah. You can't get much bigger at defensive back and corner than than a guy like DeGene, who's big, athletic, right, strong. I just think Wiggins could fit. I. I I think there's a possibility of that, but like if you want like Fangio style ish corner slash move him to nickel, you know, help in the run game, help in the run game with run defense. Like, I, I just don't know if there's any better player for them to do that right now than, than to Gene. So. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, I'm the lions at 29 I don't necessarily want to take this player, but I know what Richie wants to do at 30, so I'm going to take Tyler Guyton. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> we were going to fight. I was going to buy a ticket. <laughs> um, you know, without uh, spending too much time talking about it, they have a need at corner now because of the Cam Sutton situation. Uh, Wiggins falls here. He's certainly in play. Um, hmm. Honestly, not a great Lions board here. Well, unless I just want to get do, you do know. it. He's your guy. The buzz has been there. Has recently. it? Okay, I've missed it. I've missed it. If it he has was been thirty-two there. on Brugler's board as well. Like I think the buzz is there. He's got the size. If you want someone opposite Hutchinson, could look really good in three days. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll throw it out there because I want to get really him in, good. I want to get him in the first round. There's been buzz, so yeah, this is going to look stupid now, and we'll see how it looks in a few days. We're going Marshawn Nealon out of Western Michigan to the Detroit Lions. This is Smitty. This is what they do. We were aghast when they took Jameer Gibbs at twelve. <laughs> we were. Yeah. We were. Jack Campbell at eighteen. When they took Campbell at eighteen, they just do this. They're like, we like that guy. We'll be taking him. We were and speckledorfed when they took Marshawn not, Neeland. Yeah. It's not the University of Michigan, but Western Michigan. But I do think Darius Robinson's in play here as well, right? Local kid yeah. as well, like being drafted in Detroit, mm-hmm. like by hometown team, like that's a possibility. But there you go. Yeah, Wiggins probably doesn't fit there what they look for, like the height weight yeah. of a corner. But they definitely have the need at corner. So we'll uh, as the Lions. We will continue to look for that on day two. Yep. But uh, as we wrap up here, Richie, the Baltimore Ravens are on the clock. I know what I want to do. I I think I know this I is a do. sweet spot. I think this is a perfect pick if Michael Penix is somehow on the board or Bo Nix is on the board for a team that wow, might give it up want... on Lamar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My two-time MVP? No, I'm good with keeping him. For someone to want to come up and get that fifth-year option. But we thought that about Will Levis last year, and Mm -hmm. Tennessee did not move up for him. So that's not a guarantee. If someone does, I think that that the Lions pick and the Ravens pick make make the most sense for someone to come up and grab them. There's a lot of smoke that the Mm -hmm. Ravens are – looking at a receiver like a uh, AD Mitchell or Troy Franklin for, for the record. Yeah. As a fan, I'd be excited in, in a team team building standpoint, that'd be your fourth receiver since 2019 in the first round. At some point you need to start building the rest of your roster. And I understand that the Ravens have done a very good job building the roster outside the first round, but first round is where you get your cornerstones. You can't just keep drafting receivers. So yeah, as a fan, I'd be excited. But from a team-building standpoint, I think it'd be a mistake. Nate Wiggins, very interesting. 
Uh, I know they do a lot of zone. Ravens do a lot of man-to-man. I don't know how much I love that. I would be looking at Tyler Guyton. I really would because I like Guyton a lot more than most people do, I think. I I also understand that they just don't have much at tackle right now. Ronnie Stanley, even when he's healthy at this point, had his career ruined by TJ Watt. And there's, yeah, <laughs> there's not much. So maybe a little bit of a reach. I think at the end of the day, if it works out, you're happy. I'd take Tyler Guyton here and <clears throat> I'm ecstatic about it. Me personally, I'd be throwing a parade. <laughs> Dang it. I'm still was that calling. what the Niners wanted? Nope, I'm still calling. I'm calling the Niners right now. I'm making a call. All right. I'm making a call. Let me hear it. What? All right. It's always Here's, Tyler on the clock. Here it is. It's Adam off. Peters from the Commanders. I'll give you 36 40, a 2025 first for 31 and Brandon Ayuk right now. Oh. Wait, hold on. Repeat that again. I, I will <laughs> give you. Okay. Uh-huh. I will give you. 36 40 a 2025 first for 31 and Brandon Ayuk right now. Hmm. That does throw a wrinkle into what I was planning on doing, but it kind of does add to it. going to be too. loaded on day 2 for you. That's true. Hold That's on. That's true. Uh, I'm calling right now. Oh no. <laughs> Let me guess is it Mike Tomlin? <laughs> no, this is Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> 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 What's up, man? Please don't do this. <laughs> I do not want to go to Washington. Uh, My agent just called me, said what? there are some rumblings. I don't, please. What? I'll sign you whatever. Don't, you, you don't want to be. <laughs> How about a do- I'll get you a dollar. <laughs> so you, you don't want to go to Jaden Daniels? No. No, I mean nothing against Jaden. Teammates, but that teammates. Is. The Commanders. Mm. That's the best they could do? <laughs> yeah, you're right. They should have stuck with the football team. Yeah. So, All right. I mean, this is... I understand we haven't worked out a contract yet, but this is... I mean, anywhere but... Walk, Pittsburgh at 20 would have been great, but... Mike Tomlin and I look alike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'll take that into consideration <laughs> when I'm thinking about this. All right. My agent was also trying to get a hold of you. I don't know if you talked to him yet, but the Cardinals I hear are getting ready to call. So <laughs> for the last time, you do not have pick thirty-five. <laughs> yeah, it's over. <laughs> oh man, it's over. Because honestly, if I'm San Francisco right here, I look at the slew of tackles that have already been taken. None of them fell, so that's out of the question. And my mind also went to cornerback until. I just read something a little bit ago that I did not know, and it's very intriguing to me, that the 49ers, since John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan took over in 2017, have not taken a defensive back before round three. Hmm. So they just do not care what happens on the back end, I guess. And, oh, man. I was going to make the pick because of the whole IU situation. And so that's why Jake asking for him right now definitely adds to that. But it, I probably – I might not get who I want at 36. But I will – I'll just th- I'll just throw this in there right now. I will make the trade, but I'll also say who I was going to pick. I Yeah, sure. I, was, I will make the trade with the commanders because I don't give a damn what Brandon IU thinks. <laughs> um, I had a feeling you were going to say that. It's, that's how you burn a bridge, ladies and gentlemen. I knew it. I knew it. I knew he was going to say that. Hello. <laughs> hey, this is Brandon Ayuk. What's going on? <laughs> Someone just sent hey, me a jersey. Uh, it's I don't. I don't know color. what happened. I, I think why are Why my... are Washington Commanders fans <laughs> tweeting at me? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what is something got lost in the paperwork. I I meant to hit reject, but. You know, technology these days. I, you never know what's going to happen. Oh, man. Have fun in Washington. <laughs> Let's go. He gets I'll make the trade. Teammate. Because I think receiver would make sense in that instance. 
Yep. And the receiver I would have taken if I stuck at 31 was going to be A.D. Mitchell. Okay. So who's getting this pick now? Washington. Washington Washington gets gets this pick at 31. I don't think you can do players in the PFN one either. Have no, fun. That's fine, though, because that'll be accepted more because there's less return. <laughs> so it's Washington and San Fran. Yep. 36 was part of it. Yep. 36, and 40? 40, and a 1. And a 1 for 31 and Ayuk. So we'll just equate that to, I don't know. Just don't equate it to anything because we don't. 31 we and We might get this to 94. Pass. We That's true. The, we might this should pass. just this will pass. That's way too much. That's way too much without <laughs> Ayuk in it, right? All right. So now, what's Washington? Uh, Jordan Morgan will be our pick here at thirty-one from Arizona. Okay. That's all. Oh my goodness, go. guys! Hey, what happened? Hey, what did we do? Listen, this is great news. The three Kansas City row. Chiefs are the- three in a row. The, the, Chans- the Kansas City Chiefs have their pick of A.D. Mitchell or Xavier Worthy, which either one is just going to break the league. I would rather have A.D. Mitchell, but either one's going to break the league. Yeah, either one's a problem here. All right, well, she's like, uh, the Cardinals are going to call. <laughs> I have the Chiefs pick, so <laughs> if I wanted to make a trade. Yeah, I would... It would take like a one for me to move off of this. Yeah. Monty, so Monty is in a straight jacket right now, being detained <laughs> by his front <laughs> office, by the rest of the front word, office. Word got around the league. Veach is like <laughs> denying calls from the Phoenix area right now. He's like, we're, not de- <laughs> we're not dealing with this nonsense. I've, I've heard what's going on today. But it's up to you, Richie. Hey, you... It's 80 Mitchell, guys. You let this happen. Yeah. I, now I you reap it. what you sell. I love, no, I, I love reaping this. This is fine. This is totally fine. I think it's hilarious that the Chiefs could do this again. All right. So um, let's quickly go through the full results here. Starting at one, Caleb Williams to the Bears, Jaden Daniels to the Commanders, Drake May to the Patriots, Marvin Harrison to the Cardinals, J.J. McCarthy in a trade goes to the Vikings, Malik Neighbors to the Giants, Roma Dunze in a trade goes to the Jets, Dallas Turner to the Atlanta Falcons, Joe Alts. Should have been a Titan, but goes to the Bears at nine. <laughs> Olu Fashion, who goes to the Titans. Brock Bowers to the Chargers. Oh, those two thirds. Layatu Latu to Denver. <laughs> Michael Penix <laughs> Jr. goes to the Raiders. JC Latham to the Saints. Quinion Mitchell to the Colts. Troy Fatanu goes to the Seahawks. Terry and Arnold to the Jaguars. Talise Fuanga goes to the Bengals. Johnny Newton to the Rams. Amarius Mims to the Steelers. Byron Murphy the second, not to be confused with Byron Murphy the first or the third, goes to the Dolphins. Brian Thomas Jr., not to be confused with Brian Thomas, goes to the Buffalo Bills. Jared Verse to the Cardinals. Graham Barton to the Cowboys. Kool-Aid McKinstry to the Packers. Chop Robinson to the Buccaneers. Jackson Powers Johnson to the Chargers. Cooper to Gene to Philly. Marshawn Neeland to the Detroit Lions. Tyler Guyton to the Ravens. Jordan Morgan to Washington after an absurd trade with the <laughs> I actually love to see happen on draft night just because it'd be ridiculous at the end of night one to see that happen. Uh, and then A.D. Mitchell falls into the Chiefs' lap at 32. So any uh, any thoughts as we as we wrap up here? You know, I love the value at pick nine with Joe Alt falling to the Bears. <laughs> I just think that would be perfect. In the, no. the, that, the, 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 improving the offense so much. I didn't want him. <laughs> <laughs> Never you or him. the Titans didn't want him. <laughs> never wanted him. Ron Carthen never wanted him. It, for me, it was between Fashionu or Marshawn Nealon there. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you sure That's it wasn't Javon was, Baker? So good. He's up there. He's, he's up there. He's up there. Um, no, but anyway. Um, obviously, we feel good about this because it just happened. We don't know what's going to play out on thursday but like in terms of obviously we, we only could control what we could control we also had three other people each of us working on this with us how do you feel about it in terms of like relative predictability like do you think that we got too far off from what could happen or do you feel good about it i think the top i would say 20 picks i feel relatively good about it's really just when we got into the 20s where the, the heads just kind of came off and 
Yeah, I mean, that... Monty was calling every pick. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I do like a lot of the picks in the 20s. I think they could make a lot of sense. But with the, all the trades that happened and everything, I, just, I, I think that the top mm-hmm. 20, though, looks pretty good. And if, if the, that's the way it, it turned out on Thursday night, it wouldn't really be that surprising. I don't think there's anything that that's too off of the table looking at those those ones. I think two things that stand out. I think Brian Thomas Jr. goes higher than 22. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if it were me, I think I'd swap verse and law to. Okay. Yeah. I think verse goes higher than law to just because I think the, the DJ's comment on like 18 to 20 teams not having law to on their board could mm-hmm. see him push down. I don't agree. I think everybody here loves I guess- law too. Right. The only yes. the only question or pushback on that is, but what if one of those teams also has him as edge one that picks high? Very enough? true. Like, yeah. it just takes so, one. It does very much so. Who I don't is know. A... I feel good about it. I don't see all this. We laid out the scenario where Alt falls to nine, obviously, but like if that happens, I'm gonna be floored. Wait till who is... is a is a commander man? Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Who is the player right now in this this draft that we just did? Or maybe not even just the draft we did. Who is a player that on Thursday night is everybody's penciling in as a first-round draft pick that's not going to be? JPJ. I agree yeah. with that, actually. Um, that's definitely... I would, I say, would put I him mean, there, but I don't think he's going to be there. The other one that comes to mind, um, and, and I'm just going based off feel smoke around the league not what i would do the very last pick ad mitchell i wouldn't surprise me if he's around when day two starts and when the steelers trade back that's when they scoop them up there you go good luck yeah. buddy yeah i think the the o-line run that started seems extremely plausible right it was 9 10 i think 14 16 18 20 and then you know barton comes off like that Mm -hmm. feels plausible i think washington could even get more aggressive uh they could they could get in front for guy i mean i I do mm -hmm. think they want to be a part of the tackle class like they want to be a part of this run could they move up for guyton yeah i just i saw the Ayuk opportunity that's 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 why i didn't call early i love it i love it because jake what you gave me the opportunity to do when i post this tomorrow afternoon I'm going to be able to make it first round mock draft with Brandon Ayuk trade. Ooh, that's and the thumb- SEO dream right there. Yeah. So I, I'm very excited that that went down. Heck yeah. Um, Hopefully yeah, the watch no, shines up. Everybody's waiting for the trade. I mean, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't put the, uh, not bookmark bookmarks, like the, the time like stamps. The time stamp. Each. Time yeah. stamp. Thank you. Don't put the time stamps in. <laughs> yeah, no, Aver- they gotta, they average view them. duration: an hour and fifty-five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yep. like, oh, there it is. There it is. We would be the monetization would be great. So yeah, be I, sure to actually do that. I think like the one thing you remember when Na- neighbors and Daniels were talking on an Instagram live, mm-hmm. and neighbors goes like, you know. You don't even about to know what's going to happen, where Jaden's going. I think it's like more about it. He said his like his old buddy or something like that. He said something like that. And I think people thought like, oh, it's one of Thomas or neighbors. And it slipped their mind for a second that Ayuk and Daniels played together at Arizona State. Right. They just just might see that. As long as he's not a Fire, sailor. Fireworks. Fireworks. Quarterback, tackle, and another receiver for, for Washington. <clears throat> Yeah, it's also new ownership, so they're they're probably yeah. looking to sell some friggin' tickets. That's how you do it. Make a splash. Yeah, yeah. maybe Man. McLaurin becomes if it's not in this scenario too, as well. Like, the Steelers have called already, and they got told to screw off. So. Well, that's because Ayuk wasn't in their hands yet, right? Been so there, right. man. Been there. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how it plays out. But, guys, I'm so excited for Thursday. I know you guys are as well. So uh, before we get out of here, again, tell the people where they can find you, where they can find your work, all that good stuff, which you have coming as we get close to the draft. Oh, my Jake? God. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, you can follow Always me. happens. I, yeah. We're just we're, we're both just too polite. No. Yeah. <laughs> after, after, no, no. Uh, Good sir. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, you can follow me at Jake Edinville Draft on Twitter. Um, obviously got the YouTube channel um, that's uh, that's popping right now. Got a lot going on with that. Uh, there's going to be a lot more post draft stuff than usual, and we're going to see how that goes. Um, but I'm Here I'm really go. excited. I I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Thursday, Friday. I can't wait to watch your guys' stream. One I'm working on film oh, rooms right ridiculous. after the draft. Like I'm going to be up until 5 a.m. just like. <clears throat> watching your whole thing and i i just i can't wait it's just it's just the best time of year because you just there's so much going on and, and just so many people's content who i like watching and oh, i love it yeah well look i looked at the mock draft that we just put out i think there's a lot of guys that we got in the first round that are going to round one yeah exactly that's what you're gonna get a lot of on thursday night and what are the titans <laughs> <laughs> now, what are talk about what the titans, titans right thinking <laughs> Could have had him at seven, but they didn't Titans get him at had ten. Joe Alt, and they traded back. <laughs> Sean was always their guy. <laughs> it's a two third round pick. Are you kidding me? Two third round picks? Why my ass with two third round picks? <laughs> Just take Joe Alt. Don't get cute here. Uh, no, but yeah, Thursday I've made a I've made a promise to myself, especially because Tyler's going to be in Europe. No clue what's going to happen there. I'm going to Facetime him at like four a.m. when the Steelers are picking. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, no, I but, uh, I got a prize wheel. I got a lot of things planned for Thursday. We might have somebody that people are not expecting to see pop in. So I'm uh, I'm very excited to see if I can make that happen. Uh, but I know, I know Jake is, is also going to be <laughs> Jake is also going to be doing stuff during the draft. So if you're like me and you got like two TVs in your basement, maybe a third screen, a laptop or something, have both of them up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Best time of the year. Go enjoy. Uh, Derek's pre-draft stream as oh, well. He'll be live yes. for like two hours leading up to the draft. So that'll be very fun. Um, but yeah, I'll have the links to Jake's stuff in the description, of course. So you can go subscribe to his YouTube channel and all that good stuff. And Richie, what about you? Where can people find you? At RichieBrads36, if you want to make fun of me. He's a resident Ravens Beautiful. fan. I'm here for it. If you're a Sun Devils fan looking for good content, I'm your guy. All 15 of you. All 15 of us. <laughs> But you know what? It's better than being a U of A fan. I'd I know. I know that, that everybody. I know the Arizona State community is really excited to see where Jaden Daniels land. I know that they're going to be very supportive <laughs> of his NFL career. If there's an ASU fan that supports him, I question their fandom, and that, that's a whole <laughs> thing. So, you know, we don't. We've been going for over two hours, and that I would double that. Yeah, it might be to four. It might be to yeah. four if yeah. easily Power four. Ding ding. No, ding, ding. <laughs> so we don't. We... Uh, you know, he's he is a football player who's going to the NFL. That's the nicest thing I can say. He is. He absolutely is. Couldn't beat BYU. What's he supposed to do against an NFL defense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he who just is, couldn't cut who it. Who is Mel Kiper? Rest in peace. <laughs> Yeah, better Dude, production than Joe Burrow. Um, <laughs> ta, ta, yeah, I don't ta, know. Ta, ta, ta. <laughs> <laughs> I just get a sense that Jaden's not going to be able to cut it. Speaking of cuts, go to your haircut at Keats Barbershop, 401 Burkitch Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Again, Keats Barbershop, 401 Burkitch Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Christian does a great job. Download the app, The Cut. Book an appointment with Christian today. Or if you got to walk in, Ashley or Tony there can take care of you as well shout out to our friend Haley everything custom designs customized t-shirts hoodies all that good stuff also does tumblers uh does pretty much anything that you want her to do except for hats hopefully coming in the future but apparently it takes like a whole new set of equipment so doesn't have that going yet but uh Tyler, no, well, I just noticed you're changing the logos so that yeah. kind of threw me off for a second but good job um everything custom designs Facebook link will be in the description, whether you are watching or listening to the show, you can find it in both places. Once again, big shout out to Richie and Jake both for joining the show. This was a ton of fun. Always enjoy what you guys do and collaborating on this together at this time of year. Uh, for Smitty, for Tyler, the, the next thing we do is going to be, actually, no, let me hold off on saying that because I'm trying to do something tomorrow with Dan Orlovsky of ESPN. There it is. Coming on the channel talk about pick number 20 so i am excited for that uh carve out about 20 30 minutes of a conversation about the nfl draft of course but then on after a damn that plane and you'll be on a damn plane but then after that the next thing that we're doing is the live draft stream so that'll be the next thing that we got going on big thing be live for i don't know what's the first round take 10 hours something like that we'll be live for all 10 of them Potentially uh, 12. and then and then day two 
as well. So very excited for that. Again, shout out to Jake. Shout out to Richie. And uh, Tyler, enjoy your trip. This is the last time Thank you'll you. be seeing the people until afterwards. So any any parting words? I hope the Steelers do the right thing. I hope they either take Nick's. the <laughs> <laughs> Nick's I hope, PA. I hope they either take the tackle or trade back. And then for everyone else, I hope you have a beautiful draft. I hope it's a lot of fun for everybody. I'm so Absolutely. sad that I'm not able to participate this year. My dad just – he needs to think better when it comes to planning vacations, especially yeah, no, over the draft. Are you serious, pal? Yeah, what are we doing? Come on. Come on, this is up Come on, Carrie. Fall weddings. What are we doing? Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely ridiculous, yeah. but I will try to stop in and see what it's doing. It's, it's hard to really predict when the Steelers are going to be picking. I mean, it, especially if I, if I wake up and they trade out of the first round. Like, oh, they, yeah. Uh, it, it, that would be awful. So we'll see. You might see me on Thursday night at some point. It'll be like 4 a.m. in France. So, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, we'll we'll play it by ear. But everybody enjoy the draft. One of the best weekends, if not the best weekend of the entire year. The best. Full stop. Until then, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell here. Uh, we are going to post this as a podcast as well. So if you want to listen to two hours plus of us just going through a mock draft and getting very frustrated when we had control of the Tennessee Titans, thank you for doing that. <laughs> over there as well but until then for smitty for tyler for richie and for jake this has been the around the 412 first round 2024 nfl mock draft and we'll talk to you guys next time bye-bye